Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what, if Naruto graduates at 10 Chunin exams. Before I start, please support for more amazing content, and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Babakom and link in description and support writer. Let's start the video. Naruto Uzumaki passed the Genin exam age 10. Under Kakashi he competed in an IWA Chunin exams with Kiro his best friend and Saku the girl he was in love with. After watching them brutally murdered he changed. With a new team will he ever accept them? The four figures sprinted through the trees, leaping from branch to branch. Glancing over his shoulder the rearmost person saw dozens shapes gaining distance. He ducked a thrown kunai only to have a shuriken slam into his lower leg. He cried out in pain, stumbling on a branch and missing his next leap. He slammed into the next branch with a thud. The trio ahead of him turned see their friend drop to the floor. Go! He cried as he pushed himself up. I'll hold them. No! We can't leave you! One of the pair cried as she moved towards him. I said leave me! He roared, turning to face his attackers. You're an idiot if you think we are going to leave you behind Naruto. A second voice called as he dropped down next to Naruto. Sensei, you are the only one capable of taking the intel to the village and live. Go! The girl as she also dropped down next to Naruto. I can't leave you guys, I can the final man said. No Kakashi sensei, go we can hold them, the girl said cutting him off. The trio of Genin turned to face the oncoming foes. Kakashi sent them one last glance before leaping off. Kiro, Naruto. I'm glad I knew such good people in my life. Saku said, turning to them with tears running down her face. You two can still make it away. I can hold them here. Naruto urged desperately. No can do Naruto. I'm not leaving my best friend to die. I've lived ten years and I've known you for four of them. That's enough for me. Kiro said. Same here Naruto. Saku said. Naruto opened his mouth but before he could speak, a kunai flew past his face. Kiro's eyes widened as the kunai lodged into his throat. He wildly tried to pull the kunai out as blood spewed everywhere. Time seemed to slow for Naruto. BBR brother Kiro gasped. Kiro slumped to his knees, blood flowing from his throat. His eyes rolled back and he hit the floor with a thud. Naruto stood, watching as part of his world collapsed around him. Naruto we got to move! Saku cried, tears flowing down her face. She spun slamming a foot into an oncoming attacker's face. The man crumpled but his place was taken by another. Naruto spun to help his last remaining teammate but the sight that awaited him would haunt him forever. The new attacker swung his sword, slicing cleanly into Saku. He cleaved a huge chunk out of her side. She fell sideways hitting the ground with a thud. Naruto stood there, unable to move, unable to speak. Emotions suddenly rushed through him. Dozens of emotions ranging from rage to heartbreak suddenly erupted. You bastards! He screamed. Red chakra suddenly slammed into the ground from the sky. A giant pillar of pure chakra hit the ground with a rush, and just as fast as it had come it was gone. Standing where Naruto had been was a demonic fox-like creature. The creature pounced with unbelievable speed, darting from person to person, ripping them to shreds with ease. It was over faster than it began. Thirty-eight dead bodies littered the floor in various different places. Some intact, some with various different parts scattered. As quickly as it had come the chakra left Naruto. He slumped to the floor. He lay there for a few moments, staring at his dead teammates. Kurosaki he gasped before he lost consciousness. Kakashi spun as he heard an ungodly sound. His eye widened as he saw the pillar of chakra. He quickly bit his thumb, slamming it into the ground. Before him now stood a small dog. He tossed a scroll in front of the animal. Yo Kakashi, it said. Pack and get this to Konoha ASAP. Get it to the Hokage. Do not stop. I need to go back and retrieve my team if they are still alive. He ordered. Kakashi leapt off, not even giving the dog chance to speak. Pack and watched his master leave, a sad sigh leaving his mouth. Yet more heartbreak for Kakashi and any of his students who lived. Kakashi burst into the newly formed clearing, shock fluttering across his face. He hadn't entered a battle, but more a massacre. Not since the Nine Tails attack had he seen such a brutal massacre. Even Itachi's clan attack had been less bloody. He quickly scanned the scene, spotting his Genin team lying on the floor. He sprinted over, assessing the damage. His face paled as he saw that Kiro and Saki were defiantly dead. Hope filled his face when he saw a breath leave Naruto. Then another. He rushed over, kneeling before his student. Pain was plastered over Naruto's face, his face contorted in agony. Kakashi hauled the young genin onto his back before moving over and storing his two dead teammates into deceased storage scrolls. With one last glance at the scene he turned and sped towards Kanoha. Behind him a lone figure sat up with a groan. 
blood seeping from his head wound. The IWA headband hanging loosely from his around his neck. The third Hokage stood alongside Kakashi inside the hospital. They observed as the doctors analyzed the blonde genin. The heart rate scanner showed he was barely alive, but the brain scanner showed whatever was going on in there was very active. It appears to be a chakra-induced coma. Very rare and from what we have gathered from scrolls, only happens in Jinchuriki after they initially go into tailed beast form. We only have one reported case and whilst he lived, he went through such trauma that he was changed. Whilst Naruto is strong-minded it's like a genjutsu similar to Tsukuyumi. He will emerge changed, and if we add the loss of his teammates, he may never regain his former self. Thank you doctor, the third Hokage said gravely. Kakashi please follow me. The pair left the doctors to tend to the battered genin. His screams could be heard down the halls. How long do they think he will be like that for? Kakashi asked. He will remain like that until his body heals, they reckon a month maybe two. But there is a bigger issue, the Hokage said grimly. They entered his office, with Kakashi standing in front of the desk, watching in confusion as the Hokage handed him a book. My lord, what use is the bingo book now? Name Naruto Uzumaki. Age 10. Rank A. Warning, approach with caution. If red chakra is sighted flee immediately. Wanted for killing 29 genin and 6 elite jonin senseis. Any other information lacking? Description intel required. What the hell? What are IWA doing placing this on a mere genin? A rank? Kakashi cried out in shock. You see the issue. Once young Naruto awakens I want him resting for a month. After that you will be one-on-one -on -one training him up for a year. After that he will be accompanying you as part of a two-man elite cell. I need him trained enough to survive anyone who comes at him. The Hokage ordered sternly. Yes, Lord Hokage. Kakashi nodded. Two years later. Sasuke Uchiha sat impassively, staring out of the window lost in his own thoughts. He had finally passed and was about to get a jonin sensei. Finally he was making the first big step towards killing his brother. No longer was he being held back by these idiots in his class. As he sat and thought he barely noticed Irika walking in. Silence. Irika roared causing the rest of the class to rush to their seats. Sasuke sighed as Sakura sat one side of him with Ino on the other. He hated this fangirls and their obsession with him. He could never understand why they didn't realize he just wanted to focus on becoming stronger. Today class I will be announcing the teams and their jonin senseis. Firstly team 1. Irika began. Sasuke immediately partially zoned out Irika, instead focusing on what he wanted to ask his sensei first. Team 8 will consist of Hinata Hyuga, Kiba Inazuka and Shino Aburame under Kurina Yuhi. Team 10 will Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka and Choji Akimichi under Asuma Saratobi. Irika stated. Erm sensei, you forgot about team 7? Shikamura said. And anyways there are only Sakura and Sasuke left so are they not getting a team? Well spotted Shikamaru, but actually I did not forget about team 7. Team 7 will consist of Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno under Kakashi Hataki. They will also be joined by an already past genin with 2 years experience. Sasuke's attention suddenly sharpened. A genin with two years' experience. A jonin sensei. This team was almost perfect apart from the fact he was with Sakura. He had a strong teammate, and he was certain he had heard his father and brother talking about a Kakashi before but he couldn't quite remember. Yet again he was lost in his thoughts while Sakura and Ino argued over him. The jonin sensei slowly arrived to pick their students up until only Team 7 was left. Sakura sat in awe of Sasuke whilst the latter brooded over their late sensei. Both of their attentions were snapped to as the door opened, three hours late, and a tall man walked in. Sasuke quickly analyzed him, his gravity-defying hair, the headband covering his left eye, the face mask covering his mouth and nose. Other than that he was dressed in standard jonin attire. Training ground three in ten minutes. I'll meet you there. Just got some bits to do. He said flatly before turning and leaving as fast as he had arrived. The pair sat there in shock before realizing they had already wasted a minute of which they needed to get to the training ground with. Immediately they shot off towards the training grounds. Sasuke and Sakura arrived within 7 minutes and 46 seconds. Only to find another person, similar to their own age, around 12 as their class to Sasuke's annoyance had started two years late. The rules had changed to raise the earliest passing age to 11 as opposed to 9. The boy now sitting on a training post turned in his and raised an eyebrow in surprise at them. He was dressed in a black coat that hugged his sides going down to his knees. His left sleeve was completely ripped off showing a tattoo that reached down to his elbow of a pure black demon like fox. The number 246 was tattooed above that. His right sleeve was ripped just above the elbow, his lower right forearm had a strange gauntlet donned. Both of his arms showed muscle which was surprising for how young he weighs. 
He wore simple pure black ninja trousers with black steel cap boots that reached just above his ankle. His shinobi headband was tied around his forehead keeping up golden blonde locks. His face had strange whisker-like lines on his cheeks. His cerulean blue eyes stared them down, confusion flashing across his face. And you are? he asked. Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. Sasuke replied cautiously, hoping the Uchiha name would get some respect from his newcomer. And you are here because? the boy demanded, anger flittering across his face. They are you new team Naruto. A voice called out to them. The trio spun to see Kakashi walking towards them. His head was tilted as if he was trying to judge the situation. Naruto spun at him, his eyes narrowing in anger. You what? He demanded, anger laced in his voice. I said they are your new teammates Naruto. Kakashi said calmly. I heard you Kakashi. I was more wondering why the fuck I have new teammates. Naruto furiously. Well myself and the Hokage both thought you needed a change. So new teammates. Kakashi said trying to calm down his student. I don't need new teammates. I was fine with just me and you. Naruto growled at the jonin. You think I want new teammates? Naruto you are just going to have to deal with it. Kakashi said forcefully. Now if you will be quiet for a second I want to talk to them. No Kakashi, we are not just leaving this. Naruto said bitterly. He hopped down, landing perfectly on the ground, his coat fluttering behind him. Underneath he wore a simple black shirt. He began to stalk over to Kakashi, a murderous look in his eyes. He only got halfway before Sasuke blocked his path. What's so wrong with your teammates? You have the last Uchiha you should be rejoicing. Sasuke said hotly. So what, a name means fuck all in the real world. You could be from the Hokage for all I care. You are still a fresh rookie. Naruto said sharply. Now get out of my way. Sasuke stood in shock for a moment as Naruto pushed him aside and continued towards Kakashi. Unleashing waves of killer intent. Sakura winced at the killer intent but her eyes widened at what she saw. Naruto calmed down, weakened Kakashi began, but was cut off quickly. Sasuke had spun and slammed his heel into the back of Naruto's head. The blonde stumbled forwards a few steps. Kakashi frowned underneath his mask. This was not going to end well. Naruto vanished in front of Sasuke, reappearing behind him and slamming his heel into the back of Sasuke's head. The Uchiha went sailing through the air, on a direct collision course with a tree. However Kakashi flew in between the two, catching Sasuke in his arms. Naruto! What the hell do you think you're doing? Kakashi demanded, his voice level rising. No Kakashi, what the hell do you think you're doing? Naruto cried furiously. Kakashi was about to answer when Naruto just vanished. Instead he just sighed. Not again. He quickly placed Sasuke on the ground by the training post. Well there isn't much I can do concerning Naruto at the moment. So we might as well begin with waking up Sasuke. Kakashi said with a sigh. Quickly creating a water jutsu, we splashed Sasuke causing the raven-haired boy to jolt upwards. He glanced around confused. Where did Naruto go? He asked confused. To cool off for a bit. Now I'd like to start this by testing your combat abilities. Usually I would start with likes, dislikes etc. But we will have to wait for Naruto to calm down so we shall start with combat. Sakura why don't you start? Naruto burst into the Hokage's office, swinging the door open. The third Hokage sat there, a single eyebrow raised in confusion. The blonde was practically growling with anger. What the hell is the idea here old man? Naruto demanded. Naruto the Hokage tried. No do not Naruto me. I do not want new teammates. I was fine with me and Kakashi. I don't need new teammates. I'm nearly Jonin skill level already and it's been a year. Naruto exclaimed. Naruto. Listen to me. You need a change. You barely live at the moment. It's just missions with you. You are strong, maybe stronger than some Jonin and defiantly most Chunin. But you need teammates to advance. You can never reach Jonin rank without them. Hokage cried. I do not want teammates. Naruto tried again. Naruto, you cannot hide from people all your life. What happened to them was a tragedy but the next two Chunin exams are here and in Kumo. And for God's sake it's not like the Reikuge and most of the ninja there don't like you. Hokage said flatly. The decision has been made, end of. I can't just move on from Kiro and sack you old man Naruto said, his voice breaking. You don't have, you just need to find new people to love as well. Hokage said, walking round to comfort the young boy. He hugged Naruto, watching as the young boy collapsed into him. He had gone from anger to an emotional wreck instantly. It seemed that the mood swings issue was still there. It just hoped that the blank outs and visions weren't. Now let's get you back to your team, the Hokage said softly. Sakura and Sasuke sat there, drenched in sweat. For the past hour Kakashi had pushed them to their limit. 
they had traveled around the entire training ground in their battles. Sakura had never realized how far behind Sasuke she was until now. But even her precious Sasuke had been torn to pieces by their new sensei. It seemed Kakashi's specialties were his almost unlimited jutsu list and combat intelligence along with reactions. Sensei, what are Naruto's specialties? Sakura asked curiously. Sasuke quickly looked up from where he had been staring. After being beaten his feet had seemed to become quite interesting. Kakashi tilted his head from where he sat on the training post. He raised an eyebrow, putting away the book he had been reading. Some Ika Ika book or something. Naruto's specialties? Hmm, Kakashi said thoughtfully. Well one defiantly has to be his clan jutsu. Along with a few jutsu which are unique to him and a very tiny amount of others. He also has huge amounts of kenjutsu and bukijutsu skill. His taijutsu is also unique, he seems to create it up on the spot. He does not really have a style, it's just counters and pure brute force. He also has a particular skill in fuinjutsu. And let's not forget the kagebushin jutsu. Sasuke raised an eyebrow, that was an awful lot of things he was good at. Maybe this guy was more powerful than he looked. But do not get me wrong, Naruto has his weaknesses. Because of his massive chakra he has problems with control. Whilst he has mastery over his clan jutsu and others, his chakra control is awful which means genjutsu can tear him to pieces. His thought process also needs work, he is a bit impulsive which means he may either charge in or just simply ignore the main tasks at hand. There are a couple more but those are his secrets to disclose not mine. Kakashi said with a sigh. Sensei, how strong is Naruto? Like rank-wise? Sakura asked. Kakashi tilted his head at her. Raising an eyebrow he reached into his pack and pulled out a slim book. He tossed it towards her and nodded towards Sasuke indicating he should read as well. Sensei what is this? Sasuke asked. He recognized it but he couldn't remember it. This is the bingo book, the list of the most dangerous ninja and killers in the shinobi world. Anyone who is important enough to be put in here is someone to fear or trust depending on their allegiance. Kanoha Ninja are pages 139 to 245. Kakashi said, pulling out his Aika Aika book. Sakura flicked through to the set pages. Sasuke and Sakura leaned in, reading the short names list, recognizing a few names like Asuma Saratobi, Shikaku Nara who had come in to do some talks on strategy, Hayashi Hyuga who had come in to explain some of the politics and finally Kakashi, and just below him a name they did not expect. Naruto Uzumaki. Quickly they flipped through to Kakashi's page, examining it. Name, Kakashi Hataki. Age, 26. Rank S. Warning, flee on sight. Highly trained XNBU captain, reported to know over a thousand jutsu. Flee on sight if not jonin or higher. Tall white hair, headband over left eye. Standard Kanoha jonin attire. Wow, Kakashi sensei I did not expect you to be S ranked. Sakura said impressed. Sasuke took the bingo book and examined it closely, studying something. Sensei, who's this? He asked curiously. Kakashi raised his eyebrow quizzically, glancing over. He grinned under his mask when he saw the name below him. Jiraiya. Sasuke obviously was wondering about the legendary Sanin. You might meet him in time, but I thought you wanted to look at Naruto's book entry? He said casually, still reading his book. Sakura and Sasuke quickly flicked through to Naruto's page. Sasuke's eyes shot up as he read the ranking. He's a ranked? They both cried in surprise. A kanai came sailing out of the air, slamming into the bingo book. It nailed it to the far tree, ripping through Naruto's entry. Hey, I didn't get to finish reading Naruto's entry. I wanted to know why he was in there. Sakura exclaimed furiously. And you won't be getting a chance to any time soon. Naruto growled. I'm back, Kakashi. Ah, Naruto, excellent. Now could you three come here so we can actually do some proper introductions? Kakashi said cheerfully. Sakura and Sasuke came and sat in front of Kakashi, with Naruto leaning against a nearby pole. He studied them, tilting his head slightly. Right so to start why don't we say a little about ourselves? Kakashi said simply. Sasuke and Sakura stared at him blankly. Naruto sighed, glancing at Kakashi. Why don't I start Kakashi? Naruto asked. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, my clan, friends and training. I don't like people who make my life harder, the council, weak people and IWA ninjas. My dreams are to destroy IWA and rebuild my clan. Excellent, now my name is Kakashi Hataki. I like many things Kakashi began before a sharp cough from Naruto interrupted him. He sighed. Like dogs, jutsu in my books. I dislike a few things like people who hate Aika Aika and Kanoha. My dreams are to just enjoy life. Now you Sakura. My name is Sakura Haruno. I like him someone. Sakura stuttered, glancing at Sasuke. I dislike Ino and people who hate him anyways. 
My dreams are to be a good Kunoichi and Ermuri Erm. Naruto sighed, shooting daggers at Kakashi who ignored them and motioned for Sasuke to start. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. I like training in Dango. I dislike people who disrespect the Uchiha clan and a certain someone. My dream is to kill a certain someone and restore my clan. Great, we have a fangirl on our team and a stuck-up brat. Whoopi Naruto thought angrily. Excellent, right now Sasuke, Sakura how are we feeling? Ready for another bout? Kakashi asked. Yeah I'm good. Sakura answered. Who against? Sasuke asked as he nodded. Naruto here. Naruto will firstly be playing defensive to test your teamwork before going on the offensive. Kakashi explained. The three genin nodded, moving to take up their places on the battlefield. Oh and Naruto, no few in jutsu or family and clan jutsu for you. You can use anything else on the offensive. On the defensive however I will let you use the chains to test their speed. Kakashi called out as he watched. Naruto nodded, turning to face the pair. He grinned. Ready? He asked. Let's go then. Sasuke immediately rushed him, launching a swinging punch which was followed by a spinning kick. Naruto quickly sidestepped the punch and caught the kick in his hand. He ducked low and rotated his hand before swinging it out. Sasuke went sailing through the air but managed to flip and land safely. He moved in again but this time Sakura attacked Oswell. Naruto quickly engaged in a taijutsu battle with Sasuke again, letting the Uchiha unleash everything he had on him. Sasuke threw a powerful punch that Naruto caught on his elbow, using the momentum to add to his spinning kick. The super-powered kick hit Sasuke in the leg flipping him over. He then slammed his fist into the airborne Uchiha sending him crashing into Sakura. The pair hit the floor with a thud. That all you got? I didn't even have to use any jutsu? Naruto said laughing. Shut up. Sasuke growled, leaping up from on top of Sakura leaving behind a blushing Kunoichi. Katan, great fireball justu. A large rolling ball of fire flew towards Naruto. But the blonde just stood there unmoving. He raised a single eyebrow before spreading his arms. A large rolling ball of fire flew towards Naruto. But the blonde just stood there unmoving. He raised a single eyebrow before spreading his arms. Sasuke stared at him. Surely Naruto wasn't about to just take the blow head on. Suddenly Naruto swung his hands together, slamming his palms together. Multiple purple chains erupted from his hands, firing towards the fireball. The chains moved to surround the fireball, catching it midair. The chains strained for a moment before tightening and suddenly the fireball seemed to melt into them. Sasuke stood there in shock. His best jutsu was just gone. He had just been outclassed in one single jutsu. Naruto you may now test their defense, Kakashi said cheerfully. Naruto grinned, but not the kind of friendly grin. The more evil, cunning type. Swinging his arms out the chains responded, snaking their way towards the pair of genin. Sakura yelped as the chain swung directly at her. She barely managed to leap out of the way, watching as it crushed the ground where she had been. However all this did was distract her from another threat. Another chain had been snaking its way towards her, firing forwards it wrapped itself around her leg. Within seconds Sakura found herself upside down and hanging from air by the chain. Sakura desperately tried to cut the chains with a kunai she had managed to rescue from her pouch. But no matter how hard she tried the chains just reformed around her. She could feel herself becoming lightheaded, her chakra being drained rapidly. Sasuke on the other side of the training field was desperately trying to not get caught. With a kunai in his hand he was cutting and dodging whatever Naruto sent at him. Whilst Naruto had sent a mere two to hit Sakura, Sasuke was dealing with a dozen chains constantly attacking him. Now that Sakura was out cold, Naruto could direct two more chains at the Uchiha. Sasuke flipped over two chains sent directly at him, but was caught out midair by three chains, catching both his legs together in one and finally his arms in the last two. He struggled but the chains just tightened. He could feel his chakra rapidly leaving him. He tried one last time to get out but his vision became blurry. His eyes slowly shut and his last sight was Naruto and Kakashi walking towards him slowly. I would have thought he lasted longer than two minutes, Naruto said as he stared down at the unconscious Uchiha. Would you have lasted this long against you when you first started? Kakashi asked cheerfully. They did pass my test however. Well what test I had in mind. It's not like I could have done the bell test with two. Sasuke did what I expected whilst Sakura needs a lot of improvement. Now let's get them home. It's the second time today they have been knocked out. Naruto sighed. His teammates were so unbelievably bad that it hurt. Kiro and Saku could beat these two in seconds. Sasuke maybe had potential but that was because of his bloodline. But then again Kiro hadn't had a bloodline and he was the most powerful out of all of them. Sakura was basically useless from what he could tell. These two needed a fuck ton of help to be even half of what Kiro and Saku were. I'll take Sakura, you take Sasuke as you know the Uchiha area better. Naruto said. Kakashi simply nodded, hauling up Sasuke. 
With one last glance Naruto flickered away with Sakura over his shoulder. Kakashi stared at where he had been for a moment. He hoped Naruto was not comparing these two to his old teammates, or he would never get anywhere. That and his hatred for IWA was never a good sign. However a more loyal Kanoha shinobi alive there was not. And a more promising shinobi also there was not. Naruto had everything he needed to be godly strong but his hatred and weakness had to be overcome. He too flickered away heading towards the Uchiha district. Naruto arrived outside the Haruno residence. It was a small two-story house tucked away inside of the business district. It appeared to be next to a small clothing shop. He knocked on the door before waiting a few seconds. The door opened to reveal a small woman with dark blonde hair, very unlike Sakura's. He raised an eyebrow, thinking he had got the wrong address he turned to leave. Excuse me, young man, is that my daughter? She asked steadily, but Naruto could see anger across her face. Yes, ma'am. She is just lacking chakra. She should be fine tomorrow. Naruto explained. I will take her now, boy. She almost snarled. Naruto passed the knocked out Jenin over. He began to turn but then changed his mind. He faced the short women, annoyance written across his face. Just because I hold something does not mean I am that something. Naruto growled. I know what it did but you cannot judge someone who was barely a day old for something like that. I know full well what happened that day and I know full well how many people died. But judging someone who you have just met and do not know does not seem fair no. If I was to judge you right now I would say that you seem bitchy and arrogant, but you are probably a very nice woman when you are not pissing off people. Do not judge a book by its cover. With that Naruto turned heel and walked away, disappearing into the crowds. Leaving behind him a very confused woman holding a very knocked out young genin. The next day Sakura and Sasuke were up bright and early, arriving at the training field at 8am like Kakashi had said. They sat patiently waiting for him, but minutes turned into an hour and that hour turned into three. They slowly became angrier and angrier until the white-haired man strolled up waving his hand in greeting. Morning, he called cheerfully. You are late, Sakura cried. Sorry got lost on the road of life. You see it's quite bendy. Anyways how are you too? Kakashi responded. Enough chit-chat can we start yet? Sasuke demanded furiously. When Naruto arrives, Kakashi said pulling out his book. And speak of the devil, Naruto walked up even more casually than Kakashi. However, he raised his eyebrows seeing Kakashi there. Been waiting long? He asked. Just got here. How many today? Kakashi responded. Twenty-three. Bit fewer as I thought I needed to get here earlier. Naruto responded. Sasuke and Sakura stared, watching this almost too casual conversation. What the hell? You two are three whole hours late. Sakura cried, exasperated. Road of life. Naruto responded flatly. He pulled out a kunai leaned against a training post and started picking his nails with it. Anyways team, today we will be working on your basic skills. Sakura I want to test your chakra and stamina and Sasuke I want you showing Naruto your speed, Kakashi explained. They quickly split off into pairs, with Sasuke following Naruto. Sakura stayed with Kakashi and sparred with him till she was tired. This was pretty quick as her stamina was horrible. Right Sakura, I'm going to put this bluntly but your stamina sucks. So because of this I'm thinking we put you on light chakra weights and daily laps to increase your fitness. However your chakra control seems abnormally high since you can highly control your chakra bursts and your muscles. What jutsu do you know? Kakashi asked curiously. Earn none sensei apart from the basics. Sakura mumbled. Well we will be changing that. I'm thinking genjutsu would be perfect for you. Kakashi explained. Because genjutsu is so intricate your chakra control will make you perfect at it. I'll see what I can do. Sakura beamed at this and they carried one working on her stamina, with her doing laps of the small lake. Meanwhile Sasuke was with Naruto testing his speed. Okay Uchiha, I want you to race me back to Kakashi and if you don't win we are doing it again till you do or the training finishes. Naruto said bluntly. What? Sasuke said in shock. That's stupid. Not really. I'm not exactly fast but unless you can keep up with me you are going to get roasted out there. Naruto said. Now keep up. Sasuke had been about to answer but Naruto was gone. He growled and leapt off after him, determined to keep up. By the time training finished Sakura and Sasuke were shattered. Every part of them hurt. Naruto however looked barely touched. He had been doing laps of the training field with Sasuke chasing him, and he was lightly panting. Kakashi just stood there doing his little eye smile thing. Good job team, you two are improving already. Right now, tomorrow we will be starting D-ranks, yes even you Naruto. Now go how you two and get some rest. Kakashi said. Sasuke and Sakura dragged themselves up. Naruto could hear Sakura asking Sasuke on a date. God she was annoying. Well Naruto, I'm proud of you. 
You didn't get angry once, Kakashi said with a curious tone. I promised the old man I would try to treat them like teammates. So I'm going to try, Naruto responded. Now how about some ramen? Kakashi nodded cheerfully and the seasoned pair left, chatting aimlessly. For the next month the team followed the same routine, training for three days a week with missions on the other three and Sundays for days off. Sakura's stamina exploded to where she could do 50 laps of the lake without tiring. Her training weights had also increased to a total of 100 pounds. Sakura's genjutsu skill had risen surprisingly fast. She now knew five basic d rank genjutsu and her taijutsu was getting better. Sasuke had also asked for some weights with his totaling at 200. Sasuke's speed had shot up along with his jutsu list that Kakashi had been teaching him. His stamina had also increased a great deal along with his taijutsu. Naruto was only there during two of the training days, preferring to train on his own or with Guy's team. He participated in the D-ranks, and only exploded twice at them during all of it. Overall Kakashi was proud of them and was thinking about asking for a better rank, maybe a C-rank, or even a B-rank mission. And that's where his team found themselves. Unfortunately Asuma's team had snapped up the first C-rank so they were stuck with Border Patrol. Apparently bandits had been sighted to the west. They had quickly set off, arriving at the outpost in good time. Quickly they set out to find these bandits. Currently they were traveling through a heavy wooded area towards the bandits' last known location. So Naruto, how did you get A rank? Sakura asked. I'd rather not say, Naruto said bluntly. For the past week Sakura had been trying to find out what had got Naruto into the bingo book. But he just put up this defensive wall and clammed up. Sakura sighed. She quickly disappeared into her own thoughts. This was shattered when a kanai sailed at her. She was broken out of her thoughts in time to feel a chain wrap around her leg. She plummeted towards the ground, but was stopped just before she hit. Sakura pay attention. Naruto roared at her. The chakra chain retracted as dozens of men exploded out of the trees. Naruto quickly burst into action, with Kakashi following. The pair leapt into the enemy with no fear. Sasuke stood there for a moment before leaping as well. Sakura stood stunned, watching as Naruto and Kakashi tore apart the bandits before them. But there were so many. Naruto ducked underneath a swinging attack, slamming his fist into the gut of the attacker and sending him sailing backwards. However, more replaced him. In the side of his vision he saw Kakashi ripping them apart with a kunai. He quickly fired through some hand seals and dozens of chakra chains exploded out of him. He tore apart the attackers, the chains flinging them across the ground or breaking them in half. However Naruto spun upon hearing a scream. Sakura was defending herself from three attackers and was badly losing. She tried desperately blocking with a kunai but it was hopeless. One of the bandits lunged at her and managed to get a glancing blow on her right shoulder. She cried out in pain and just managed to dodge the next attack. Sakura duck. Naruto bellowed. The pink-haired genin barely managed to hit the deck fast enough before an extra chakra enhanced chain destroyed the three attackers. It hit them so hard and fast that they bent in half on impact. They spewed blood out of their mouths before flying away, slamming into a tree in a small heap. All three lying dead and not moving. Sakura looked to thank Naruto but saw he was too busy with an onslaught of a dozen attackers. However he hadn't seen one sneaking up on him. She quickly leapt up and sprinted towards him. She dared not call out, or otherwise his concentration might be broken. The bandit was nearly on him when she leapt, slamming the kunai through him in one motion. He gurgled a cry, scrambling at his neck. Sakura backed away in horror at what she had done. Suddenly there was some unseen call out that made the bandits retreat rapidly, forming up a line about fifty meters away. Naruto spun to see Sakura kneeling next to the dead bandit's body. Realization flooded him as he realized what she had done. Slowly he kneeled down next to her, Summoning a shadow clone he slowly picked her up and passed her over to the clone, ordering it to move her back safely. He glanced over at Sasuke who was staring with defiance at the bandits. Around him a small circle of attackers. His attention was snapped back to reality when a man walked forwards out of the ground. He was different to them. He was huge, easily seven feet tall, built like a brick shithouse. He flexed his muscles and growled at them. I came here with over a one hundred bandits, and I'm disappointed to find barely forty of them left but against the copycat ninja and the shadow fox of Konoha what else can be expected? He said with an evil chuckle. Now let's see how you handle a proper ninja instead of these weaklings. I didn't get a rank in the bingo books for nothing you know. Kalai Yaman is my name. Well Kalai you might find that I didn't get into the bingo books for nothing either. So let's see who deserves it more. Naruto said with a grin. Kakashi I'll handle this, get them back to the outpost ASAP. Kakashi glanced at him, he knew his pupil could handle the bandits, but this new attacker was new and he didn't know the skill of the guy. However this was stopped when the remaining forty or so bandits roared and charged towards them. Sasuke you ready? 
he called over to his raven-haired student. Born ready, he said steadily. The pair leapt into combat, fighting as a well-trained pair already. If Sasuke slipped up Kakashi was there to cover him. Sasuke fired fire jutsu at the bandits with Kakashi doing likewise. Meanwhile Naruto and Kalai were still having a stare down with each other. Finally Kalai growled, charging forwards. He leapt upwards, before bringing his foot down to crush Naruto. The latter rolled sideways avoiding the crushing blow that shook the ground. He quickly moved in, slamming a palm into Kalai but it was like punching a mountain. His fist made a weird crunching sound upon contact. Grunting in slight discomfort at feeling his broken hand he moved back. Already he could feel it healing from the fox. Kalai however didn't let up and unleashed a barrage of super-powered punches and kicks. Naruto dodged as much as he could already forming plans in his mind. Flipping over the man and leaping high into the air he formed a hand seal, grunting in pain from the moving bones. Kagebushin! He cried. Thirty clones erupted into existence and threw themselves at Kalai. The monstrous man laughed and went to work, with poofs of smoke showing his destruction of the small army. Naruto growled before unleashing his plan. He quickly rushed through multiple hand signs before holding out his left arm. Lightning crackled at the end of it, the air was filled with the sound of thousands of birds singing at once. He rushed forwards, leaping off clones before slamming his fist downwards. Chidori! He roared pushing his hands deep into Kalai. The lightning cutter sunk deep into the man's stomach, with his hands erupting out of the other side. Kalai bellowed in rage, ripping Naruto off him and hurtling him across the battlefield. Clapping his hands together, Kalai fired through some hand signs and slapped his hands against his stomach. A weird green aura exploded out of him, and the wound just closed. Kalai bellowed out a manic laugh. Whilst I can use my arms nothing will stop me. I can heal any wound. He chuckled, advancing on the blonde who was recovering from the deadly throw. Naruto stared at him, an improved plan already forming. If the hands were the key to this guy's jutsu then all he had to do was remove them, right? Naruto leapt upwards firing out a dozen chakra chains, moving rapidly. Kalai moved quickly, smashing through the chains but two managed to get either arm, stringing him up. He struggled wildly before the sound of thousands of birds filled the air. The bandit leader watched in horror as a mass of electricity plunged deep into his heart, feeling the hand reach in and crush it in one blow. Then there was nothing. Naruto leapt back, releasing the chains and watching the body flop to the floor. He felt a short burning sensation cover his left arm. He glanced over and saw the numbers shift from 246 to 293. Grimacing he moved back to his teammates, leaving behind the bloody corpse alone for the birds to feed on again. Chapter 4 Team 7 sat there, gathered around a small fire. In the distance the birds called out nervously to each other. Kakashi sat there trying to get a read on what his two students were thinking and feeling. Sasuke he wasn't too worried about but Sakura was worrying him. She had barely spoken, unlike Sasuke she hadn't ever seen death before like this let alone killed. Naruto meanwhile just sat there, trying to hit birds out of the sky with chakra chains. Grinning whenever he hit one of the creatures. He seemed totally fine which was understandable, he had done this enough by now. Kakashi. Naruto called over his shoulder from where he was sitting. Yes Naruto? Why did those bandits have basic ninja skills? I mean they were super poor but they were still there. No bandits we know of have ever had ninja skills. I'm not sure, did you get any intel from that Kalai before he died? Nah. He didn't really have time to talk before his heart exploded. I see. Sakura just stared at the pair, discussing death like it was nothing. WW what is wrong with you two? This is a person's life you are talking about. Sakura cried, tears springing to her eyes. Naruto paused in his little game, turning to face her. He tilted his head slightly, regarding her. Naruto pointed at his tattoo, staring Sakura down. Do you know what this tattoo is, Sakura? No. It's the number of people I've killed since I was eleven. In one year I've killed two hundred and ninety-three different people. I live with death on a permanent basis. During my childhood I was beaten so close to death I could feel it on so many occasions I have lost count. If a person is trying to kill me I will kill them back. The world isn't full of flowers and bullshit okay. We are shinobi not fucking cookie bakers. Sitting there and crying about the past won't do shit. It's either you or them. That doesn't make it right. No it doesn't but what if it had been your mum who was being attacked, would you have done anything about it then? Yes but. But nothing. If someone is standing there, a kanai pressed against your throat you will do something about it. We are born to kill, but then again you have never lost someone in that way. When you see your best friends die before you can decide for yourself. Naruto I. She was cut off as Naruto stood and began to walk off, not looking back. However after a few paces he paused. Sakura. Thank you for saving my neck out there. And with that he was gone. 
Sakura looked desperately at Kakashi, noticing the man's frown. The group were woken early by a loud screeching, or at least Naruto and Kakashi were woken. Kakashi looked over to the tree where Naruto was resting on, on the highest branch. On his arm rested a mite bird. Naruto was deep in concentration, reading the message written on it. Kakashi frowned as he saw Naruto's eyes widen. The boy quickly resealed the message, burning it with a weak fire jutsu and sent the bird on its way. Not after giving a treat first. Kakashi get the others up. Asuma's team is under attack from Zabuza of the Hidden Mist, he's been badly wounded along with one of his students. We have been requested to move there as fast as possible. Naruto said, a weird urgency in his voice. The blonde summoned a dozen shadow clones, ordering them to clear the campsite whilst he roused Sakura and Sasuke. The pair looked grumpy at first but once the orders were relayed the urgency passed over them as well. They quickly rushed around to help tidy up and after ten minutes they were ready. Where are we heading sensei? Sakura asked worriedly, that was Ino's team under attack. The wave country, we need to get there ASAP and we are a good two days away. If you get tired Naruto's clones will carry us. Now let's move. Kakashi ordered, vanishing. The remaining trio vanished, chasing their sensei. It took under two days to get there, with Naruto ending up both Sakura and Sasuke, much to the latter's discomfort. Sasuke noticed that the boy seemed to be an endurance god. Kakashi looked exhausted whilst Naruto was still powering on, only showing slight signs of fatigue. The four arrived at a small village, with Naruto carrying them all across the water at breakneck speeds. They quickly halted, resting on the edge of a small dockyard. In front of them were twenty fully armed guards, blocking their way in. Right, myself, Sakura and Sasuke will head around and get to Asuma. Naruto, Asuma warned of the armed guards hurting the villagers. I want this lot out of the equation ASAP. Save one for questioning however. Right you two with me. Kakashi said, not even waiting for an answer. They leapt off leaving Naruto alone on the docks. The blonde tilted his head wondering how to go about this. He shrugged and decided on a frontal approach, not like it wasn't foolproof. Grinning he emerged from the thick fog that covered the entire land. He strolled towards the group, whistling to catch their attention. So ladies, how's things? He asked with a chuckle. The men stared at him, a boy of merely thirteen was insulting them. Anger drifted thorough them as they moved to surround him. You what boy? One of them, supposedly the leader growled. Well I was just wondering how you fucktards were coping without your mummies to look after you. Naruto said with a laugh. Why you little the man growled, launching himself and the blonde. A chakra chain fired out, slamming the man off his feet. It snaked around his foot, lifting him upwards and spinning him like a lasso. With a huge swing it flung the man through the air, sending him sailing into the village. Naruto grinned like a madman, making a single hand sign. Chakra style, chain explosion. He whispered. Hundreds of chains fired out of his body, slamming the men off their feet and sending them sailing in multiple directions. However the chains caught the men mid-air and battered them down towards the ground, causing several deafening thuds and cracks. Well that was easy, Naruto said observing his work. Nineteen men were now laying on the ground, broken in so many ways he couldn't count. Hearing two groans he turned to two lucky men, realizing they had survived the hits. He strolled over to them. So ladies, is this karma enough for raping, and killing innocents, stealing family possessions? Naruto asked darkly. If I hear that you two have returned to your master and blab nothing in this world will save you. Got it? The two men groaned but managed to mumble something which Naruto took as a yes. He simply turned heel and headed off to find Kakashi, wincing slightly as his left arm burned at 293 change to 310. Naruto arrived at the house he had located using Kakashi's chakra signal. However he winced when he saw one of the windows had a rather large hole in it. Raising an eyebrow he knocked on the door, laughing in surprise when a slightly annoyed Kakashi answered. Kakashi stared in annoyance at him, pointing at the window. I take it you caused this? He asked. I don't see how Naruto began before he glanced behind Kakashi and saw the man he had thrown, tied up in the corner. All right, yeah, that was me. Kakashi sighed, moving aside to let him in, muttering about annoying blondes. Naruto glared at him before strolling in, his eyebrow raising yet again tonight as he saw who was inside. He saw Sakura and Sasuke sitting aside, with Sakura sending him daggers and trying to bandage up a rather large boy. Sasuke was staring at him in slight shock but mixed with indifference. Across from them was Asuma whom Naruto had known for a little while as he had helped train him with one of his main weapons. Next to him sat a thin blonde, maybe a Yamanaka? Next to her was a boy with a pineapple haircut, staring off into the distance. Defiantly a Nara. Maybe the fat kid was an Akimichi? Along from that was an old obvious drunk man, glaring at Naruto along with a younger very attractive woman also whom seemed to be glaring at him. Next to them was a young boy, maybe eight or nine who was just staring at him very confused. 
Where did that man come from and why is it this guy's fault? The young kid asked. Inari. The older women scolded. It's fine, Erm. Naruto began, realizing he didn't know the woman's or the man's names. Tsunami and this is Tazuna, my father and Inari's grandfather. Tsunami explained. Thank you, Tsunami. Anyways, Inari, I threw this guy across from the far eastern docks. Naruto said cheerfully. Now, Tsunami, I shall pay for the window and if I may, head off to sleep as I am a bit tired. Erm, of course, Naruto, second floor, second door on the right. Tsunami said, utterly confused. Naruto bowed his thanks, pulling out some cash and placing it on the table. He quickly moved upstairs, sending a glance at Asuma and Kakashi before leaving. The Jonin shared a look before following him upstairs. This left the Jenin and Tazuna's family behind confused. He did not really throw him from the east dock, that must be bollocks. Tazuna laughed. Mr. Tazuna, I can actually believe Naruto would do that. He has beaten myself and Sasuke into the ground multiple times. Sakura explained. Lies. Sasuke would never be beaten by another genin. Ino shrieked. Ino I didn't want to believe but Naruto is way above genin level. He could easily be a jonin. Sakura tried to explain. Him? I doubt that. Choji said. I've seen him nearly beat Kakashi Sensei. Sasuke said shrugging. What? When? Sakura demanded. I was hiding, watching to see Naruto's personal training and tried to get stronger. Kakashi and him had an all-out fight and Naruto just went mental. He summoned a good 300 clones and they just bombarded chakra chains at him. It was mental. Naruto nearly passed out at the end but he was using maybe 20 chains per clone. However Kakashi caught him at the end and managed to get close enough to break his defense. Naruto nearly won though. Sasuke said, dropping his usual brooding self as he talked explaining the fight. No way Choji muttered. Makes sense. He is a rank in the bingo book. Shikamura said yawning. What? Ino cried. A rank. Is that good? What is he compared to Zabuza? Tsunami asked worried. It means that Naruto is on par skill-wise with Zabuza, maybe stronger depends on the situation. Shikamura said. The only thing we can say is that he is a damn sight stronger than any twelve-year-old has the right to be. So we could be safe now. Tsunami said relieved. Well probably depends on whether Zabuza got back up or not Sakura muttered. Meanwhile upstairs Asuma, Kakashi and Naruto were sat deep in conversation. Naruto was only included due to his combat experience and skills. Asuma stood by the window, leaning out after being finally allowed to freely smoke. His right arm was heavily bandaged along with his shoulder. He seemed to be leaning on his left leg more than his right. Kakashi was leaning against the wall, relaxed as usual. Naruto was sitting against the wall, one leg pulled up whilst the other was outstretched. He fiddled with a kunai, spinning it around his fingers. So, Zabuza, huh? Kakashi said. Yeah, damn guy has got better Kakashi. Asuma replied. How much better? Naruto asked curiously, he respected the missing ninja. A lot, his sword skills are way above anyone I know, apart from maybe Hyates. Asuma said with a wince. Hmm, but at least you got a hit in I guess. Naruto mumbled, deep in thought. We need a game plan, I read the report you sent us, and this hunter ninja must be an accomplice. We will need the genin to deal with him whilst we deal with Zabuza and anyone else he has got. Kakashi said thoughtfully. Kakashi you should train the genin in tree climbing and maybe water walking in the mornings. Meanwhile in the afternoons we will need to focus on separate areas. Maybe teach a new jutsu or raise their skills. Asuma said. They will need good teamwork if this is to work. We should run a team exercise in the afternoons. Kakashi replied. Good thought him I have an idea for that. Asuma said grinning, glancing at Naruto. Kakashi raised an eyebrow, also glancing at Naruto. The blonde stared at Asuma, glaring at the smoking jonin. That idea best not fucking include me. The next morning, Kakashi and Naruto gathered the genin outside of Tazuna's house next to the forest. Asuma was still healing under Tsunami's care. Right, this morning we will be learning a new skill, designed to improve chakra control. Kakashi said cheerfully. Finally, something useful. Sasuke muttered. So what I have been teaching you isn't useful, ha Uchiha? Naruto growled. Maybe we should do some more chain training? And then no, it's fine. Sasuke said desperately. He was not ready for that fucking crazy-ass training. For the past month since Sasuke had joined Naruto had invented a new training method. It was basically him hunting Sasuke with chains and trying to smack him to a pulp. It was designed to apparently improve his dodging and movement speed but Sasuke suspected Naruto just liked to hit him. It was not a nice training style to be on the end of. Good, now it's very simple. Naruto explained. Watch. Naruto leapt forwards, sprinting towards the base and with a small jump, he landed on the tree trunk and ran up it for about ten or so feet. 
The technique requires chakra control levels higher than what some of you have at the moment, so we will work on this every morning. If you get it quickly I want you doing laps up and down to improve chakra capacity. Kakashi explained. You need to attach your chakra to the base of the tree, feeling it move and flow beneath your feet. However too much chakra will cause the bark to explode. He motioned to Naruto who sent a huge wave of chakra to his feet and the tree erupted. As an explode into hundreds of bits with on the base left over. The blonde landed gracefully. Kakashi glared at him. Obviously not that big but the bark should come off. He explained, hitting Naruto on the back of the head casually. With that the five genin walked to their assigned trees and began working on it. Naruto was surprised to find that Ino and Sakura picked it up quickly, whilst Shikamaru gave it one attempt and just sat down watching the girls. Sasuke was having a bit of trouble but was slowly getting it as the day moved on. Choji was having immense trouble but he had large reserves so it was expected. Several hours later Kakashi called a halt to the exercise in favor of a break. So far he was reasonably impressed with how they were going but they seemed exhausted and teamwork exercises were needed after a lunch break. The five genin walked exhausted but proud with how they were progressing. Naruto had left after an hour to go watch Tazuna as someone needed to guard him at all times. As the workmen returned home for a break as well he rejoined the group. The eight Kanoha ninja were seated on a small table out back of Tazuna's house. Asuma was healing well and was now able to move his arm. After lunch, Kakashi will do watch duty. The rest of you will be fighting Naruto in a five-on-one match to test your teamwork and how in sync you are with each other. Asuma explained. Now whilst you five have never fought as teams together Naruto will be going hard on you. Today we'll also define what roles we want you to have in the upcoming fight. Asuma explained. So how do we win? Shikamaru asked lazily. You just have to force Naruto into surrendering. Simple. Asuma said. The five genin nodded, sizing up the blonde who was staring absently at the sky. Since they were fully rested now they might as well start. The five moved on to the clearing and were about to start but Asuma called out to them. Before you start I want to put Shikamaru in command. I want to see something. Asuma called out. Troublesome. Shikamaru muttered. Right, you four need to keep him busy till I can find a way to break his defenses. Go. Ino and Choji launched themselves at Naruto, while Sakura and Sasuke knowing better stayed back and looked for an opening. They knew Naruto would tear them apart in a frontal assault. Human boulder jutsu. Choji roared. He quickly expanded and Naruto watched as his arms, legs and head were sucked into his body making a massive ball. The boulder quickly started gaining momentum as it charged towards him. He leapt sideways, moving to drive a devastating kick at the boulder but was forced back by a kunai barrage from Ino. Grinning he slammed his right foot into the ground, sliding it round in a wide arc. Let's make this a bit harder eh? He chuckled. Rushing forwards he ducked under a wild swing from Ino and ducked inside her guard. She gasped as a fist slammed her off her feet. The air suddenly rushed from her stomach and she felt the sensation of flight. As quickly as it had come it was gone and she hit the ground with a thud. She had never felt such force in a spar before. Shikamaru moved in to cover Choji, chasing Naruto around with his shadow, growling in frustration as Naruto eluded the jutsu, instead seeming to focus on beating the duo of Sasuke and Sakura who were dual attacking him. Sasuke knew the plan had already gone to shit when Ino was knocked down. Sakura was busy trying to keep the blonde at bay but they both knew it was hopeless. Sasuke moved in to help her, throwing a careful punch knowing that a wild one would end up with him being thrown. Naruto had this weird style, there were no wild moves or style behind it but he was always low and keeping low allowed him to get inside your guard easily. One second he was there, and the next he was inches from you and inside your guard. His style also evolved around short but powerful punches and kicks. Combined with a high tune and speed the genin were going to be torn apart. Sasuke's punch was blocked, and just like he had feared Naruto was inside his guard and a devastating punch that knocked him off his feet was thrown. Naruto had seemed to master the art barely moving but having huge power. The raven-haired boy was sent sailing into Sakura who caught him. The pair slid backwards and tried to regain their breath. Opposite them behind Naruto were Team Asuma who were regaining their breath. Naruto seemed to realize that he was locked between two teams. Most people would be worried but Naruto just had this wild grin on his face. Sasuke watched in wonder as the crouch and placed his right hand onto the ground. His confusion was raised when the blonde gripped his right elbow with his left arm and twisted. Giga explosion! The ground seemed to just erupt. For maybe fifty feet in a circle around the blonde the ground just exploded. Bits of rock and dirt went sailing quickly followed by the genin and even Asuma. But the jutsu wasn't done there. After that a huge shockwave was fired out, knocking the recovering genin and sensei off their feet. Meanwhile the blonde stood in the center and just grinned panting slightly however. Naruto what the fuck was that? Asuma exclaimed. Just a personal jutsu Asuma. Naruto replied, 
his grin still plastered on his face. What the fuck is it? Asuma demanded, still recovering from the devastation. It's an S-rank jutsu I created, based on combining wind and lightning into one. Because combing one really unstable element with a highly volatile one would always be beyond dangerous I decided to merge them into one. Essentially I push maybe a jonin's worth of chakra into my hand and just left it loose in one blast. The chakra tries to escape in various ways but when chakra nature is added it just explodes. The longer you hold it in your palm the more dangerous it becomes and the second it touches something it explodes outwards. Naruto explained. Why would you create that? You are slightly mad. Asuma sighed, turning to check on the genin. Only slightly Naruto chuckled. The five genin sat there glaring at the blonde, each nursing several bruises and half-healed cuts. For five days Naruto had basically tortured them. The blonde had beaten, cut, and broken them. He attacked with no mercy and they were all 100% that he had tried to kill each of them at least seven times each. However their teamwork had exploded and they were a well-oiled unit by now. Within the space of five days they had decided Naruto was insane. The guy had mood swings from manic attacks to moments of indescribable depression. However the moment they were all dreading was coming. Currently Kakashi and Asuma were out on the bridge. With a clatter Inari came flying in. The boy was panting hard and had the look of fear plastered all over him. Three ninja on the bridge. He cried. The six genin were moving instantly to their stations. Team Asuma rushed off along with Sakura and Sasuke but Naruto merely halted at the door. Tilting his head he made a sign and a dozen shadow clones poofed in existence. Ten quickly moved to defend the village whilst two defend Tsunami and Inari. With that he was off, quickly overtaking the others and arriving at the bridge in under a minute. What he arrived to was a standoff, between Asuma and Kakashi and three others. One he recognized from the bingo book as Momochi Zabuza and another as Raiga Kurosuki. Next to them was a small person, maybe female but he couldn't tell, in a Kiri mask. So these were missing Kiri Nin and both A-rank. This was going to be very fun indeed. Kakashi, he said as he appeared next to them. The white-haired Jonin nodded as his arrival, staring down the two Kiri ninja. Within moments the Jenin arrived and fanned out behind the Jonin and blonde. So Kakashi, I see that you brought some runs to play with. Zabuza chuckled. Raiga this should be fun. Shut up Zabuza, I'm only doing this for the pay. We are still enemies after this. Raiga growled. But that is the Shadow Fox of Konoha. And the copycat Nin along with one of best fire guardians. I know this will be fun. Zabuza chuckled. So Kakashi why bring the runts, the blonde I get but why the other runts? You say that like they are not threats? Kakashi asked. They would be if Haku here couldn't tear them apart. Zabuza replied. Right enough talk. Let's get on with this. Raiga growled impatiently. The swordsmen both unstrapped their blades, with Zabuza pulling out his massive cleaver and Raiga two smaller swords. Kakashi glanced over at Naruto. How long till the jutsu is ready? It's ready now. Asuma glanced at them both, wondering that the hell they were on about. His question was answered quickly as the bridge floor erupted with hundreds of chakra chains, literally tearing the part of the bridge they were on in half. Asuma chuckled seeing that Naruto was trying to separate them and the swordsmen from the genin. However this plan went to shit when firstly the Haku person leapt across and engaged the genin, and then several hundred men had appeared on the other side and were now charging towards the three Kanoha ninja. I'll take Zabuza, Asuma you take Raiga and Naruto stop those mercenaries. Kakashi cried, leaping at Zabuza. The two other men nodded and Naruto sprinted off to stop the army heading their way. Asuma meanwhile had to defend rapidly from a dual sword attack. He ducked low avoiding a wide sweep but had to pull out his trench knives and rapidly block the other sword. However as he blocked it he managed to get one hand free and slice wildly in an attempt to push Raiga back. The Miss Nin leapt back as planned but only momentarily and pushed the attack once more. Asuma ducked low and punched forwards using the his right trench knife as more of a knuckle duster. Raiga was forced sideways but managed to regain his balance and block a slash from Asuma. He grinned and flicked his hand sending lightning firing at the Jonin who just managed to dodge. Raiga grinned and fired more lighting and the Jonin laughing madly all along. This was going to be fun he thought. The five genin had been surprised when only one foe came against them and had thought they had it easy. How wrong they had been. Currently Sakura and Ino were guarding Tazuna and the workers, deflecting and stray Saban needles which their attacker loved using. Meanwhile the three boys were locked in a deadlock with the boy slash girl. They couldn't quite work out what it was, male or female. However they knew it was kicking their ass. Shikamaru rolled to the side, avoiding a Saban and desperately trying to think of a good plan to beat this person. He had to appreciate Naruto and his ingenious idea of separating them fights so the opposing jonin couldn't target them but now they were without help against a high-leveled opponent. Who not only outsped them but had way more skill. 
He watched as Choji launched several kunai before following it with a wild punch that was blocked neatly and followed by a kick that was accurately placed on his shoulder which sent the fat boy flying. Sasuke however was there in a matter of moments with Shikamaru not far behind. The raven-haired boy settled into a taijutsu match with Haku just about keeping up and thanking everything that was holy that Naruto had trained his speed. Without it he would have died several times as Haku went in for killer moves using her saban. Sasuke had noticed Shikamaru moving in to seal her in place with his shadow possession and had long since worked out that the boy was a closet genius. A low sweep with his leg forced Haku to jump to avoid being flipped. However he followed it with a combined attack with kunai and a quick punch. Haku was forced backwards and away from the Uchiha and straight into Shikamaru's jutsu. Haku froze in place as Shikamaru's jutsu latched onto her. That's when everything went to shit. A weird fog suddenly started to descend on the bridge causing the shadow to lose power due to lack of light. Haku was moving immediately and slammed several samban into the Nara causing him to drop. Well fuck. Sasuke muttered. Kakashi had straight away gone on the attack and pressed the missing ninja back. He had nearly got a kill in but the massive sword forced him to retreat. Zabuza swung the fucking thing like a twig. How could he lift such a massive sword like a bit of paper Kakashi didn't know but it was causing him trouble. He couldn't get close enough to the guy to fucking hit him. His Sharingan wasn't helping in this mist either as it was chakra laced. All he could do was listen for an attack and smell Zabuza. His sense tingled and he dropped low, ducking under a swing that would have cut him in half like butter. Twisting sideways he managed to slam a kick into where he thought Zabuza would be and was rewarded by a nice thud. Water however sprayed over him. A damn water clone. He needed to clear this mist or otherwise he would lose ASAP and he could tell that Asuma would be hindered by it as well. But he doubted he had a wind jutsu strong enough to push this apart. Naruto might have won since wind was his primary nature. But he could not get to his student easily so he needed to make a plan. However in his thoughts Zabuza had moved into an attack position and swung his sword in a wide arc aiming to drive Kakashi into his second water clone. It worked to a certain extent but instead of going backwards Kakashi just went up. The copycat ninja vanished for a second before reappearing at his side and slamming a well-aimed punch into the swordsman. Zabuza stumbled backwards and narrowly managed to block a kunai aimed for his heart with the flat of his sword. He felt something move behind him and pushing Kakashi off he swung his massive blade round and decapitated a shadow clone. His victory was short-lived however when another clone launched a reckless attack that only a clone could. Dispatching that one easily he felt something bite his leg, then his arm and suddenly dogs were holding him down in place. Oh fuck. He muttered. The sounds of thousands of birds filled the air. Meanwhile this had been happening Naruto was demolishing an army that he reckoned was about 600 strong. He had never killed this many in a large group and even though they were not ninja, a thug with a weapon in mass was dangerous. Summoning 100 clones he ordered them to wade in and tear through the first ranks of men whilst he could set up his jutsu. This was a test jutsu combination that he had yet to use before and required inhuman amounts of chakra. There was a likely chance that this would use up about 80% of his chakra, which was roughly twice a jonin's chakra and if it went wrong he would be left with the chunin's worth of chakra to fight with. However if it went right it would be so worth it, and he could finish this quickly. He began to flash through dozens of hand seals, molding his chakra into his feet. His legs were firmly planted on the bridge about shoulder width apart. He could feel his chakra flowing through him. He released air slowly, feeling the rhythm of the chakra. Halting it, and pushing against the flow he began to build it up. Meanwhile his clones were tearing through the army. Each one was ducking and dodging before using Naruto's personal fighting style to destroy men with each punch. Down they were falling like leaves, knocked out and down whilst Naruto could build chakra. However slowly they were falling as well, popping in the middle of the bridge. When only six remained in a small circle, surrounded by roughly four hundred angry bandits Naruto felt he was ready. He clasped his hands together in a single sign. With a bellow he released everything he had been holding for several minutes into a massive burst. Destructive wind explosion! He roared. Wind erupted from him in a huge explosion of force. Gale force twelve winds completely covered the entire bridge, blowing away the fog with ease. Broken debris was picked up like leaves and thrown around whilst the army was torn apart. Now whilst the debris was several hundred meters away along with the Kanoha ninja, builders and missing ninja the army of Gato was about twenty meters away which meant they took the full brunt. Six hundred men, two hundred and thirty whom were knocked out, were ripped to shreds by winds which could flatten a small forest. It ripped their clothes to shreds and cut into them. Within seconds six hundred men had died from razor-sharp winds. Naruto stood panting before dropping to his knees. His right arm burned with pain that he had rarely felt. It felt like lava was being poured down his arm, working its way across his body. He glanced over and saw in shock as 310 to 910. With that he nearly blanked out and fell to the ground with a thud. The jutsu had obviously taken more than what he had expected, 
and he could barely feel anything. He forced his head to look up and saw Gatto and maybe fifty of his best guards slowly trotting his way, only several hundred meters to cover. With that he fully blinked and his eyes shut. Sasuke had been getting fucking destroyed until the fog had cleared. This Haku person had successfully removed Choji from the fight and managed to force Shikamaru to withdraw due to the amount of Samban in his back and legs. The raven-haired boy however couldn't keep up with the boy, which he was certain about now. The fog hid any attacks from his sight, and he had been growing frustrated. However out of nowhere this huge burst of wind that had sent him stumbling had blown away the fog with ease and the playing field was now leveled. Or well it had been for a little while until the boy had made a fucking ice dome around him. Great fireball jutsu. He cried desperately. The fireball he sent out failed like all the others in making the mirrors melt and was rewarded with several saban to the leg for his troubles. But he could not fail here. Even with his core muscles shutting down he fought onwards. Even when his legs shot agony through him he fought on. He was an Uchiha. Great fireball jutsu. He tried again, sending out an even larger one but again it failed. His chakra was getting depleted at an astonishing rate just by trying to melt this fucking dome and Sasuke knew he had maybe two more fireballs left before he was out. Rapidly dodging more Saban he tried to come up with a plan but was shortly cut off when one got a glancing blow on his neck. Blood sprayed out as it torn a large gash just millimeters from his throat. Dropping to a knee he grabbed the wound and attempted to stop the bleeding. But it was hopeless he was going to die and he knew it. He couldn't beat this fucker. Sasuke. He turned quickly seeing Sakura leap in front of him. The pink-haired Kunoichi deflected the next barrage, keeping him safe from harm. Sasuke are you hurt badly? She cried, getting ready for the next barrage. Sakura. What are you doing? Run you cannot beat this guy. He cried, he could not let his teammate die here. Another barrage of Saban came flying in. Maybe triple the rate it usually did. Sakura was slammed off her feet and sent flying by the sheer force. Sasuke just managed to catch her but the pair collapsed. Still the pink-haired girl stirred, trying to get up. What was his teammate doing? Sakura what the fuck are you doing just run? He roared. I cannot let you die Sasuke. Not here not ever. She replied quietly, tears running down he face, dripping onto the floor. Sakura managed to get to one knee, forcing her body onwards. Another barrage knocked her down, and another. Sasuke just watched in awe as the girl forced herself onwards. Why why do you do this for me? Sasuke whispered. Because Sasuke. I am not afraid. I am not scared to die. I have killed and I will kill again. Nothing scares me anymore. But most of all Sasuke. I love you and I always will. So I will protect you till the end. She sobbed. Sasuke stared in shock. Whilst these fangirls said they loved him, none of them had ever risked their lives for him. None had ever said it with such force and meaning behind it. It left him speechless, that someone cared enough to risk their life for him. Out of nowhere a huge volley of Samban ripped into Sakura, spraying blood everywhere. The girl dropped heavily, landing with a thud and covering the floor with oozing blood. Sakura. Sasuke stared in shock, before his eyes his teammate had been potentially killed and he had done nothing. An Uchiha had sat there whilst the teammate died and had been unable to prevent it. This. Was. Unacceptable. Sasuke roared, forcing the pain into the back of his mind. He was not going to lose. Pain raced through him and his eyes burned his vision flashing. He had never felt agony worse than this, but he fought through it and powered on. Suddenly his vision sharpened and he could see so much more clearly. He could see Haku moving through the mirrors, where he was going and how to stop him. Was this the power of the Sharingan? Pulling out a kunai he deflected the next wave, knocking away each and every Saman to the shock of Haku. It was even more of a shock for the young boy when that same kunai came sailing straight at him causing him to move into another mirror. How did he know where he was? Nothing could predict the movements of his mirror. Yet again he was proved wrong when a dozen or so fireballs were launched straight at him. Was the maiming of that girl he cause of this power? Was he so driven that he would gain such power when others were hurt? Was his sudden bond with this girl the same as what he and Zabuza felt? Surely not. Yet again, something had powered him up. Something had made him better than Haku in a split second, the same kind of rage which pushed people through everything no matter what. Raiga had told her a story about a couple of years ago when Amir Jenin had seen his teammates die before him and unleashed a force that could not be matched and slaughtered 35 in a matter of seconds. Could the same be happening here? Sasuke unleashed a massive fireball that shattered the mirrors, leaving Haku to leap away. The boy was still deep in thought when his sense told him to run. Something in him was telling him Zabuza needed him. The Uchiha was still advancing, moving at a rapid rate and aiming a killing blow. Wait! Haku screamed with urgency. Something inside Sasuke clicked, his brain beginning to function. He grinded to a halt, his kanai millimeters from Haku. 
He was poised to take the boy's head off in one motion but he somehow stopped. She isn't dead, just severely wounded. If you remove the samban in her neck she will breathe but she needs medical attention ASAP. Haku said the words coming out unbelievable fast but Sasuke understood them. Why why are you telling me this? Sasuke muttered in shock. I could sense a sort of bond between you two. Like something had happened. Please let me go. My master needs my help and Haku started. Go. Just go and run. Sasuke said, his voice barely a whisper. Haku nodded, sprinting off. Sasuke didn't know why he let the boy leave. He shouldn't have but for some reason it felt right. Like something had guided him to doing it. Sasuke turned his back and retreated, to find Sakura again and save her. Asuma ducked under a wide sweep, Raiga's blades crackling with lightning. The jonin had to roll sideways to dodge the following slash. He countered quickly, driving the man back with continual slashes. For several minutes there had been this stalemate. Neither being able to kill or hit the other. Asuma knew that this favored the Miss Neem because whilst his chakra reserves were large, Raiga was said to have the second largest chakra reserves of the Seven Swordsmen. That meant he outclassed him there, and he was a master. Asuma was surprised he had lasted this long. Spinning he let Raiga's lunge with his left arm slide into his guard, sidestepping at the last. Bunching his fists and holding his trench knives tight he drove the blades into the arm of Raiga. However his blow was countered by the other sword moving incredibly fast and forcing him back. Wind style, wind blast jutsu. Asuma cried, pressing his hands together and forming a small circle. Blowing hard he released a strong wind which caught Raiga off balance and forced him back. The swordsman was sent stumbling back and Asuma saw his chance. Summoning his last chakra he released his ultimate jutsu. A personal jutsu used by Saratobi only. Fire style, ash pile burning jutsu. Spewing large amounts of burning hot ash Asuma caught Raiga directly on with the surprise jutsu. The swordsman was caught directly in the middle, desperately trying to remove the ash from around him. It burned his skin, burned his clothes and for some reason he couldn't remove it. Fear filled him then when he heard the roar of flames, desperately he covered himself in water. Fire roared from Asuma's mouth and spewed onto the ash cloud. The fire immediately caught and began an inferno that torched everything within the sphere of influence. It raged for a second before being released into mist. Asuma quickly scanned the area, panting hard. Nothing could have survived that, he was sure of it. Finally the veteran Jonin could rest, sliding down onto his knees. That fight had been one of the hardest of his life. Glancing over to where Kakashi fought he gasped. No way could they really, how could someone do that? Zabuza struggled furiously, but he couldn't move a muscle. These dogs found his vital points and muscles and clamped onto them, effectively sealing them. It was like being paralyzed and for maybe the third time he actually felt scared for himself. Across from him, Kakashi stood still watching Zabuza glare at him. So Zabuza, seems you are finally brought to justice. Kakashi murmured, flashing through hand seals. Zabuza watched with horror as lightning sprouted from Kakashi's hand. The sounds of thousands of birds filled the air and the copycat ninja began to move. Picking up speed incredibly fast the silver-haired Jonin thrust his hand at Zabuza's heart. Chidori! He roared. Zabuza watched the hand in horror. Time seemed to slow for him. The ball of lightning moving directly towards his heart. Slowly reaching him. The mass of movement before him. Haku taking the jutsu for him. Haku falling onto the floor and. Wait. Haku taking the jutsu for him. Zabuza watched in mute terror as the boy he had raised to be his tool. His weapon took the chidori to the chest. Kakashi looked equally appalled that he had hit the boy, standing there thrusting his hand into the boy's heart. Zizi Zabuza Haku muttered. Hakuai Zabuza mumbled, feeling his voice nearly crack. Whilst Haku had been his tool, he had been a little brother as well. They had a connection few could ever claim to have. Zabuza loved that boy like a brother, and that boy who he had seen as an eight-year-old was dying before him. I'm your TT tool Zabuza. I fulfill them my duty to YYU. Haku said softly, coughing up blood as he talked. Kakashi pulled his hand away from the boy, catching him as he stumbled upon release. He held the boy tightly, embracing him in his pain. So, the idiot and his pet are nearly gone. Ha ha! A voice called out. The small group turned to see Gato and his guard group of about fifty bandits walked towards them. Strung up between two guards was an barely conscious Naruto. They stopped about fifty meters away from the small group and stared at them. Gato. Zabuza growled. Ha so you finally are going to die. Not like I was going to pay you anyways. Gato laughed. Gato. You backstabbing fuck. Zabuza roared. Zabuza Kakashi said softly. Zabuza turned, still stuck with the dogs but Kakashi had released two allowing him to turn. Haku was reaching for him, pain in his eyes. Zabuza big brother. 
Promise me that when I die you will focus only on freeing the Miss Village. No more of this evil to villagers who are like ourselves. Promise me Haku coughed. I promise Haku. Sabuza whispered, leaning to his brother. Kakashi released the dogs, feeling his genin approach and land softly behind him with Tazuna in tow. Zabuza pulled Haku into a one-armed embrace, tears finally springing to him. Haku leaned his head on Zabuza's shoulder and stared at the sky. Rain began to pitter down on the men on the bridge. Brother I love you. Haku whispered before slowly his head drooped. His body followed suit until he was leaning against Zabuza, who was sobbing quietly. Holding Haku carefully Zabuza lowered his brother onto the ground. Running his hand down Haku's face he shut his eyes carefully, the final tear mixing with the downpour which had started. How touching. Gato sneered. Gato Zabuza growled. Spinning he grabbed his blade, stalking towards the businessman. Kakashi halted Team Asuma who had moved to stop him. Behind them Sasuke was placing Sakura onto the ground and moving to join them. I wouldn't if I was you Zabuza. Or the boy dies. Gato chuckled. The two bandits holding Naruto pulled him tightly against them and pressed the blade deep against his throat. Kakashi stared at them, fear reaching deep into him. Kakashi's eyes studied the group, running across from left to right. He noticed the way they held themselves, some were proud and relaxed whilst others were tense and looking ready for a fight. His Sharingan eye suddenly caught something. One of the men next to Naruto winked at him. He blinked in confusion at the sly grin on the man's face. You see, you ninja think you are all powerful with your jutsu shit. Well, no more. Gato Incorporated is finally going to end up making us commoners more powerful than you ninja. Gato boasted. Kakashi glanced at the man who had winked at him and saw it slowing reaching for something in its pocket. Sliding its hand slowly down into the pocket it grasped a small ball, pulling it out. It nodded slightly to Kakashi and dropped the ball. Smoke erupted covering the small area and concealing Gato and his men. Gato cried in shock before there was a scream and a thud. The merchant backed away, desperately moving away from the screams which were erupting from around him. The screams became more frequent and louder until a roar erupted next to him. Gato jolted in fear and shock and tripped over backwards. He fell flat on his arse, his mouth hanging wide open from fear. Naruto stood there, dressed in his pure black clothing giving off an appearance of a demon. In his right arm he held a simple katana. Staring down at the tyrant merchant he grinned. Gato's scream could be heard for miles before being brutally silenced. The ninja who had watched the smoke erupted and heard the scream stood in shock as a head came flying out at them. Only Kakashi was not shocked, only surprised Naruto had gone so far and to have used that weapon. He sighed, the boy would soon be hitting a thousand kills and yet it didn't seem to faze him at all. Most men would make maybe thirty kills in their ninja career and it would haunt them forever but as far as he knew Naruto did not suffer as bad. It might be because his own demons were far worse that the deaths of those he barely knew were tiny in comparison Kakashi did not know. Breaking his thoughts he watched as Naruto walked out of the smoke still showing signs of chakra exhaustion but Kakashi knew that Naruto could push past the limits of most people. Still they needed to get him rest ASAP. He pulled down his headband to cover his eye and turned to the genin. Choji go get Asuma, you know you get Naruto back to the house with Tazuna now. Go! Kakashi ordered. The pair nodded with Choji leaping off to help Asuma and Ino rushing forwards to give Naruto a hand. The bridge builder looked on with uncertainty but then moved to assist Ino. Kakashi-sensei, Naruto looks fine? Sakura questioned, glancing at the blonde-haired ninja. His chakra levels are dropping to around 200 so he's actually in bad shape but he should be fine. Kakashi answered. 200? What do you mean? Sakura asked. Did they not teach you about chakra levels in the academy? Kakashi asked. Sakura shook her head, followed by Shikamaru and Sasuke. Kakashi sighed and glanced at Sabuza, but the man was still kneeling by Haku. Basically the number represents the amount of chakra a person has roughly. It's not the most accurate but it's good for representations. Kakashi explained. A civilian with no ninja training has roughly 100 to 150 whilst academy students had about 300 to 500. Genin have anywhere between 550 and 1000. Chunin have 1100 to 2000 whilst Jonin have anything from 2200 to 4000. Akaga or Sanin has usually got 5500 to 700. So what do you have Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked. And what about Naruto? Shikamaru added. I have about 3,200 so I am nearing the middle of the range whilst Naruto has massive reserves nearing 8,000. 8,000? Shikamaru said in shock, before sighing. No wonder 200 is bad for him. Sasuke and Sakura were staring in shock at Kakashi. They had thought Naruto had large reserves but not more than Akage. Sakura was just in awe that Naruto could be so powerful while Sasuke looked at Naruto in a new respect and was planning on demanding him to train him. Anyways you guys get moving. I need to talk to Zabuza. 
Kakashi ordered. The genin stared awkwardly at Sabuza who was still knelt over Haku before nodding and leaping off. Kakashi turned to the legendary swordsman. He glanced him over, taking in his defeated appearance. So he began. Save it Kakashi, I know what you are doing to say. Just do it. Zabuza said grimly. Actually I wasn't going to kill you. Kakashi sighed. I was going to make you a deal. Zabuza stared up at Kakashi in shock, taking in what the man had just said. He pulled himself up to bring himself to eye level with Kakashi. He stared in shock at the man. What deal? I was going to offer you the chance to stay here. Why? Why not take me back to Kanoha? Well three reasons. Firstly the people here need a protector so you could do that for them. Secondly I think you should found a village here and train the locals up. Kanoha would happily ally with you as you are so close and I have a lot of sway with the elders. Thirdly I think it's what Haka would want. Zabuza glanced over into the distance, staring out at the village that made up the most heavily populated area in the country. He could vision a hidden village here, the water could protect them and they could get wealthy quickly. I will think on it. Are we ready to go yet? Naruto asked, irritated that they were still being held up by Kakashi. Just one more thing, then we are good to go, Kakashi answered. The group was finally setting off after four days of rest at Tazuna's house. While well, Naruto, Asuma and Kakashi had rested, the other genin had been hard at work building the bridge which was finally built. It had been suitably named the Great Kanoha Bridge for all that the teams from Kanoha had done for them. They had wanted to call it the Great Naruto Bridge but Naruto had kindly turned them down. Now the group were waiting for Kakashi who had apparently some final words to say to Zabuza. The copycat ninja walked over to the swordsman who was staring out over the vast sea. So, made your choice yet? I think I have, this place needs me. And you need it. Perhaps. I have spoken with Tazuna and the people have agreed and messages of confirmation from the daimyo have arrived. I shall be the first Namikage. That was fast. I thought you hadn't made your mind up? I did it on the first night, wasn't hard so I set it up quickly. A surprise I guess. Kakashi chuckled, staring out over the sea as well. He turned and patted Zabuza on the shoulder before walking away. He strolled back to the group and motioned for them to head off. Sensei is Zabuza not coming back with us? Sakura asked. I'm afraid not Sakura, he has matters to attend to here. Kakashi said, sharing a glance with Asuma who was grinning. It took two days to get into the land of fire's borders at a leisurely pace. They had taken a nice slow pace to enjoy the return journey and with the arrival of Team Karina it had become more enjoyable. Well at least for Asuma. Naruto knew who most of these people were from accidentally walking into their class looking for Iruka and had managed to snag a glance at the register. The groups mingled with Sakura, Ino and Hinata taking the front and leading. Hinata had given Naruto a weird look before moving to join the girls, although any look from a Hyuga was weird. Sasuke had quickly settled into a chat with a boy called Shino and started talking about tactics or some shit. Choji and Kiba quickly hit it off and followed Sasuke and Shino. Behind them came Kakashi reading his book and then Asuma and Kurinai. Somehow Naruto found himself with Shikamaru and was actually enjoying talking to the boy. His laid-back personality with a razor-sharp brain was making for a good conversation. Naruto noticed Asuma pulling out a packet of cigarettes and called over to him. Yo Asuma. Yeah? Pass us over a cigarette, haven't had one in ages. You smoke? Yeah, it's coming. Fares. Asuma passed over a cigarette to the shock of everyone but Kakashi and Shikamaru, but it was more likely the latter didn't care. Kurinai was glaring at the pair as Naruto lit it with a small-scale fire jutsu. You gave a boy a cigarette? Kurinai demanded. If Naruto wants to smoke then he can Asuma start it. You gave a boy a cigarette? Kurinai growled. Erm Kakashi a hand? Asuma muttered as he backed away from Kurinai. Sorry bud, if Naruto wants to smoke he can but you're on your own here. Kakashi said still reading. Naruto grinned as he puffed away at the cigarette, already feeling calmer. What's this? My rival being unyouthful and letting his students smoke. A loud voice called out. The group stopped to see a small band of four people walk out of the trees, with a tall man leading. He was tall and dressed from the neck down in a ridiculous green jumpsuit. Behind him stood a mini clone of him, a Hyuga and a girl with buns in her hair. Oh. Fuck. Naruto muttered. Shikamaru went to glance at him but realized he was already gone. All that was left was a dust cloud. I'll catch you later Kakashi-sensei. Got errands to run and people to run away from. Bye. A voice in the distance shouted as Naruto sprinted off. Guy-sensei Naruto is being unyouthful. I must help him. The mini-clone cried. His youth must be returned. And with that the mini-clone went sprinting off screaming about youth. The rest of the groups both stood watching in a mixture of confusion and humor. 
The new group were sighing like this was a regular occurrence. Kakashi, however, stood there chuckling at the scene while still reading his book. This was, however, cut very short when the tall green jumpsuit man called over to him. Kakashi, my rival, what is that you are reading? Is it one of those unyouthful books again? The man cried. Erm well you see Guy Kakashi began. Your actions are truly unyouthful for someone of your strength. I must help you find your youth. Guy exclaimed. Yeah I gotta go. Bye. Kakashi yelped, sprinting off in the same direction as Naruto. My rival. Guy screamed, sprinting after Kakashi. The entire Kanoha group stood there in shock and were a bit confused at the same time. This hung over them for a full minute before it was broken by a voice. What are you lot standing around for? Come on I want to get back already. A voice called as a figure emerged from the forest. Naruto emerged to the surprise of them all apart from the new Hyuga and the bun girl. He was chuckling as he walked over and whispered something in Asuma's ear which made the man grin. All right let's get moving. The bearded jonin called out and ushered the genin forwards. Sakura, Ino and Hinata yet again took the front with Sasuke and Shino bringing it up behind them with the newly joined Niji, the new Hyuga falling into conversation with them about clan superiority, or some shit. Kiba and Choji were still chatting away whilst the Sima and Kurinai continued to flirt. Shikamaru and Naruto were joined by the bun girl called Tenten and they fell into easy conversation with Shikamaru asking about how Naruto had escaped from the mini-clone whose name turned out to be Lee. Shadow's clones of course. You cannot be serious. We cannot do this so close to the Chunin exams. It needs to happen, the Uchiha needs a more support to make him better. Plus he needs to have more leadership and be the strongest. You have to do this, we will not take no for an answer. Fine, but I get to choose the rest. Agreed. One week after the mission end. Naruto was currently eating his mission funds away at Ichirakus. He had been relaxing the entire time since the end, taking his time to enjoy the break. He had needed it however, his tattooed arm had been playing up the entire time since and only yesterday had it calmed down. It was both a curse and a gift, but he was beginning to lean more to the curse side now. He was at 961 and for some reason it didn't feel right to nearly be at 1000 kills age 12 but he would get over it. Maybe more ramen might sort it. Hey Naruto, who's that over there? I am called over to him as she cleaned the worktop. Naruto turned and glanced over his shoulder, raising an eyebrow in surprise to see an ANBU standing there waiting for him. He cocking his head to the side in question as the ANBU walked forwards. Naruto, the Hokage would like to see you please. The ANBU said. Naruto nodded studying the ANBU before shaking sighing. He quickly finished his ramen and paid, generously as usual before leaving. The ANBU quickly vanished leaving him to make the trip on his own. During his short trip to the Hokage Tower Naruto pondered as to why he was going there. He still had a day left on his break and he hadn't done anything wrong that he could remember. Upon arrival at the tower he noticed Kiba and Shino entering as well and raised an eyebrow in surprise. As he walked into the Hokage office he was yet again caught by surprise as he saw his own genin team along with the other three he had met on the way back. Team's guy, Kurinai and Asuma stood around the main desk waiting for their orders. Ah excellent, now Naruto is here we should start. The Hokage began. As of now your teams will be being changed. He said bluntly. There was uproar from everyone but Kakashi and Naruto at this. He merely sat back and watched as the jonin senseis argued with the Hokage with support from their genin. Kakashi merely pulled out his book and leaned against the far wall. Naruto chuckled and walked over to him. Guess this might be the first time I learn from someone who isn't you Kakashi-sensei. I guess it might be. Well anyways as long as you don't get guy then you're fine. Kakashi chuckled. Naruto had a small laugh, eyeing up the other jonin. Karinai was a genjutsu master, and if he did say so himself, very attractive. Guy was a taijutsu god, and whilst his fashion choices were a bit off he was a man with good intentions and Naruto had known him for years. Asuma however was a different prospect, a powerful well-balanced ninja who focused on close combat attacks with large chakra reserves. Silence. The Hokage roared, forcing the genin and their senseis back. Now this choice is final and originally came from the council. The teams will be as following. Team 7 will consist of Sasuke Achiha, Sakura Haruno and Choji Akimichi. You will be a first response team designed with hitting fast and hard. You will be led by Kakashi Hataki. Team 9 under Might Guy will consist of Rock Lee, Kiba Inazuka and Hinata Hyuga. You will be a squad designed with tracking and then taking down targets. Team 8 will consist of Ino Yamanaka, Shino Abirame and Niji Hyuga with the role of infiltration in mind under Karina Yuhi. Lastly Team 10 under Asuma Saratobi. Naruto Uzumaki, Shikamaru Nara and Tenten. You will be a tactics and combat squad. Now you are all dismissed as you have the rest of the day to get orientated with each other. Tomorrow you will be assigned your first missions. 
The genin stood there glumly, apart from Naruto who was overjoyed to not be with that shithead Uchiha. He turned to Asuma and grinned before pulling out a cigarette. So Asuma-sensei shall we depart? The new Team 10 were sat on training ground 26, a favorite of Asuma's. Asuma sat on the ground, legs crossed slowly puffing away at his cigarette. Naruto stood leaned up against a tree also smoking a cigarette whilst Shikamaru was laid back watching the clouds. Tenten sat awkwardly fiddling with a kunai. So shall we begin? My name is Asuma Sarutobi, son of the current Hokage. My likes are Kanoha and the land of fire. My dislikes are traitors and those who lack the will of fire. My dreams are already fulfilled. Asuma said simple, relaxed the whole time. Naruto why don't you start? My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, my clan, friends and training. I don't like people who make my life harder, the council, weak people and IWA ninjas. My dreams are to destroy IWA and rebuild my clan. Naruto said, reciting what he always said when asked this. Asuma raised an eyebrow at the IWA comment, but he knew the history behind it. He then nodded to Tenten to carry on. My name is Tenten Yasori. I like weapons, sealing scrolls and training. I dislike people who judge others and people who aren't loyal. My dream is to own a weapons shop and be the greatest weapons mistress in Kanoha. Tenten said proudly. Naruto nodded slightly. At least she wasn't stuck up and from what he could remember she was skilled. He used to train with Lee and Guy but when Guy got a team he rarely did it. He had a bad run-in with Niji so tended to avoid them. My name is Shikamura Nara. My likes are clouds, doing fuck all and shogi. My dislikes are work, loud people and work. My dreams are to get married to an average girl, be an average ninja and live an average life. Asuma chuckled at that, as he knew Shikamaru's dad very well. Nodding he carried on. Next I want you to list of the jutsu you know along with your skills. He nodded at Tenten to start. I know manipulated tools, blind meteor along with several minor sealing techniques for weapons. I am skilled in almost every form of weapons, mainly kanai, shuriken and katana. Other than that I have few other skills Tenten admitted. Asuma nodded, noticing Naruto's raised eyebrow at the katana part, but then also noticing the look of sadness that flashed across his face. Maybe he should check that out with Kakashi. Pushing the thought aside he moved on to Shikamaru. I know shadow paralysis just to and whilst it's troublesome I apparently have a knack for tactics and strategies. Other than that I'm out. The Nara said with a sigh, still examining the clouds. Asuma took this in. He had no Shikamaru was a genius from the start but this could be good. He had a rough idea of what Naruto was good for. Full on frontal assaults that could tear apart opposition lines and positions. Right, where do I start haha? Naruto chuckled. I have affinities with wind and lightning so they are my two primary jutsu. I know several high-ranking jutsu for both, along with my clan jutsu. I have some skill in fuin jutsu along with my shadow clones. I'm particularly skilled in kenjutsu and other close combat fighting styles. Asuma chuckled at the moderate appraisal of himself. So he had a good combat squad that could handle most attacks with their three different combat positions, long, medium and close. This could be interesting. Now to see how they fought solo and as a team. Right so now we know each other's strengths and weaknesses I want you to show me. One on one. Asuma said, standing and moving into the middle of the battlefield. He motioned for one of them to step forwards. You need to either get me to surrender or until one of us gets too tired or I call a halt. Simple. Shikamaru sighed, pulling himself up from the ground. Muttering something about troublesome he walked to face Asuma. Naruto and Tenten backed away several feet to watch the action as unfolded. You know I've already done this before Asuma-sensei. Shikamaru drawled. Yes, but your team needs to see how you work. Asuma explained with a chuckle. Now let's talk more fight. Asuma leapt forwards, racing at Shikamaru who proceeded to back away fast before darting to the right. Asuma carried on following him, trying to get into attacking range for a taijutsu barrage. Shikamaru narrowed his eyes before reaching into his ninja pouch. Asuma noticed this, deciding to prevent any trickery from occurring by pushing the attack. Driving a low kick at Shikamaru who was forced to leap into the air. However Asuma expected him to attack, Instead he threw several smoke bombs at him, covering the area. Landing softly Shikamaru proceeded to back away quickly, and gathering himself. His only chance would be to catch Asuma in his shadow jutsu. Only instinct saved Shikamaru as he ducked, causing a wide kick to go sailing over his head. Forcing himself to roll out of the way Shikamaru leapt up and push off sideways jumping out of the smoke. Asuma quickly followed him, forcing the young genin back. Shikamaru was desperately dodging every attack that was fired against him when suddenly he took a hit to the stomach which doubled him over. Tenten gasped thinking that he was down and out. Naruto however grinned when he saw the hand sign. Asuma was frozen still, stuck under the shadow jutsu. Game, set and match. Shikamaru coughed. Not quite. 
Asuma exploded into a poof of smoke. Naruto burst out in laughter to see his signature jutsu used like that. Asuma quickly appeared behind Shikamaru and sent a kick into his knees causing the boy to double over. It was a good tactic Shikamaru, making your opponent think they have the upper hand and then causing them to make sloppy attacks, just outclassed. Asuma said approvingly. Shikamaru hauled himself up, muttering about troublesome senseis. He limped back to the other genin, still muttering. Naruto made a move to replace him but was halted by Asuma. Not yet Naruto, I want to face you last. I have the feeling you'll need all the chakra I can muster, and I need something to face Tenten -ten with. Asuma explained. Naruto nodded and ushered forwards a slightly insulted Tenten. -ten. He face was flushed with embarrassment, thinking that Asuma didn't value her. Hey Tenten. -ten. It's not that Asuma thinks you're not up to scratch, but once you see Naruto fight you'll understand. Shikamaru explained, groaning as he rubbed his knees. Tenten -ten nodded, although still annoyed. She turned to face Asuma across the training field. He Shikamaru, I've seen Tenten -ten fight like once or twice and unless we want to get impaled we should move back like now. Naruto said, slowly edging away. Troublesome. She's the second weapons mistress I have ever met, and if she is anything like the first then we want to back up a bit more. Tenten -ten struck first, drawing out several kanai and flinging them at Asuma. The jonin was forced to pull out a set of trench knives, deflecting each of the kanai rapidly to avoid being impaled. He raised an eyebrow at the accuracy of them. Pushing the thought of how he could develop that aside he went on the attack, rushing forwards to attack Tenten. -ten. However this was quickly halted as Tenten -ten unleashed a barrage of weapons at him from various ceiling scrolls. The jonin was actually forced backwards by the attack before he decided he'd had enough. Wind style, wind break jutsu. Tenten's weapons were sent sailing straight back at her with a massive wind explosion. She gulped and just managed to dodge the massive barrage sent her way. Barely escaping she found herself under attack from a brutal taijutsu assault which she just managed to fend off. However she became too cocky and when she thought she had a sima style sorted she attacked and was instantly caught out. After deflecting a punch at her head she ducked low and tried to sweep his legs out. However Asuma automatically leapt upwards and crunched a boot into her head. Tenten -ten went sailing back, sliding twenty feet along the floor. Asuma landed and chuckled. As a student of Gaia I would have thought you would better, that was a rash attack Tenten. -ten. Yeah well I focus on weapons not taijutsu but it was sloppy she groaned, pulling herself up and clutching her head. Asuma wake over, giving her a hand up and helped her to Shikamaru. She groaned as she leant against a tree, watching as Naruto walked to the middle of the training area. So Shikamaru she began before she saw the Nara backing away. Hey what are you doing? Tenten, -ten, you are going to want to back the fuck up or you will be caught in the middle of a battle royale. It can't be that bae she started. Behind her a massive explosion that shook the ground erupted and sent a blast of wind that almost knocked her over. Well maybe a little further couldn't hurt. Naruto stood twenty feet away from Asuma, eyeing up the jonin. He knew he was not able to beat Asuma who was possibly one of the few jonin in Konoha able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kakashi. From what he had read on Asuma he was a heavy wind and fire user with outstanding close combat abilities. His chakra capacity was 4,200 so just above Jonin level but that was down to the Saratobi blood in him. This was going to be fun. Ready Naruto? Asuma asked. I am, but are you ready Asuma-sensei? Naruto grinned. The bearded Jonin did a double take, remembering when a young fourth Hokage faced off against his dad. This would interesting indeed. Then let's begin. Asuma cried, firing through multiple hand seals. Wind style, tornado jutsu. The wind around Asuma began to pick up speed, working through the air and gathering around him. Leaves and grass were blown about as the tornado began to take shape, with the trees even starting to shake from the force. Starting off big are we sensei? Naruto grinned. Well let's see if you can fight this, lightning style, great bolt. Firing through hand seals Naruto summoned his chakra, forming around him before firing it outwards. A mass of lightning fired out from him and slammed into the tornado. The jutsus merged, with the lightning being sucked into the tornado making it unstable and out of control. The force of two massive jutsu being combined caused an imbalance, and the tornado exploded outwards sending bolts of lightning flying out, followed by a wave of wind that knocked back Asuma and Naruto. Naruto took usage of the uncontrollable lightning around him, using the smoke clouds created as a cover for him to move in. Rushing forwards he tapped his wrist guard, catching the katana as it fired out. Gripping it in his right hand he moved forwards, sensing for Asuma's chakra. Feeling it on the right he rolled to avoid the slash from a set of trench knives. Pulling himself up he blocked the trench knives with his katana and took the blow, feeling the vibrations along his entire arm. Reaching into his ninja pouch he pulled out a kanai, promptly sending it flying at Asuma's head. The elite jonin ducked sideways and low, reaching into Naruto's guard and sending a devastating trench knife boosted punch. 
his fist connected with Naruto's stomach only for him to go up in a cloud of smoke. Instantly Asuma was looking around, trying to find where the blonde was. Giga destruction. Asuma spun around, trying to locate the voice and the jutsu. Unable to find Naruto he was about to think that the jutsu had failed when the ground below him exploded sending him flying. Now the term exploded is used loosely but in this case everything in a 20 foot radius of the jutsu was sent flying, leaving a 6 foot deep crater. Naruto sprung from the ground, katana in hand, slashing at Asuma who was mid-air. Only through elite training and reactions did Asuma save himself. The jonin pushed himself out of the slash with a small scale wind jutsu, landing 30 feet away from Naruto. He surveyed the damage. Fucking hell, what a jutsu. Shikamaru and Tenten stood there in awe. Both were covered in mud and grass from the jutsu that Naruto had just used. Even fifty feet away they had been sprayed with dirt, and both had decided that maybe retreating a few more feet wouldn't hurt. Well at least we know what Naruto's fighting style is now. Shikamaru chuckled. Tenten who was still watching Naruto engage Asuma sensei in a short close combat situation was surprised with how good the boy was. She knew very little about the boy, only what she had seen against Lee when they sparred once a month. She didn't realize he was this good. He's a heavy-hitting attack ninja. Pretty direct if you asked me. Tenten mused. See that's where you're a little off the mask Tenten. Shikamaru responded, watching Tenten's surprised response. Naruto is actually a master of hiding. Not once has he actually attacked Asuma sensei head on. Everything is shadow clones. To reinforce his point, the current Naruto exploded into smoke, only for six more Narutos to burst out of the tree lines. Each wielding a katana that even Tenten had to admit was perfect for him. Whilst he is a heavy hitter designed for frontal assaults, he is also an excellent deception ninja. Tell me, can you actually sense Naruto anyway at the moment? Tenten focused her chakra, sending out pulses like they were taught in the academy to sense for Naruto. She was surprised to find no trace of the blonde shinobi at all. See, Naruto is playing this well. He knows that until he wears down Asuma he cannot win a head-on assault against someone who has more experience and jutsu knowledge. Naruto knows exactly what he is doing. Naruto sat sixty feet away, watching his clones attack Asuma systematically, wearing him down whilst the main Naruto worked out his fighting style. Naruto was however reaching the point where he thought that Asuma was perhaps even on the level that Kakashi was at, nearly however. The man's fighting style was based around heavy attacks that would push a person off balance, then attack through their guard. Whilst Naruto was good at Kenjutsu, Asuma would tear him apart. He was still mastering the last moves of his Kenjutsu style and his wind style, whilst good, was inferior to Asuma who was a master. Still though, Naruto had a plan. The man was a mass unit fighter, like himself. Good against massive numbers but not so good one-on-one. -on -one. This is where Naruto's plan started. Multi-shadow clone jutsu. Hundreds of Naruto's poured out of the woods. The forest seemed the erupt dozens of the blonde, all charging at Asuma, who was stood in shock at the numbers. Tenten and Shikamaru sat there, pure amazement written across their faces. It had been silent for maybe thirty seconds when Asuma had killed the last of the six initial clones, then the forest had spewed out hundreds of the guy. What the hell? Tenten exclaimed as a Naruto leapt over her head, katana in hand. The guy just summoned an army. Naruto you troublesome guy Shikamura muttered. Asuma was shocked to say the least, he knew Naruto had the largest chakra reserves in the village but this was something. Even his father could only manage maybe 300 shadow clones at once before becoming tired. However this genin had just managed nearly 700 of the fuckers. His body went into autopilot dodging and slashing at the Naruto's as he met them. But there were so many, as he killed one, two more would take that one's place. He ducked under a slash and drove his knee into a clone, before launching himself upwards. As he soared upwards he glanced down to watch in shock as the Naruto clones began to form a chain upwards. They were like fucking ants how they moved. This had to end now or the boy would put him in hospital for the rest of the year. Wind style, great twister. Asuma crossed his arms in an X shape, focusing his chakra for the final attack. Mustering everything he had he flung his arms apart, sending a wave of wind that ripped through the clones. Razor-sharp pockets of wind tore through the clones sending them up in clouds of smoke. The area filled with the smoke of hundreds of clones dispersing, covering the training area. That should do. Whoa, Asuma sensei just demolished Naruto's clones easily. Tenten said admiration in her voice. The fight isn't over, look. Shikamura pointed out. Naruto was standing below the mass of smoke, knelt with one head pressed against the floor. He seemed to be focusing hard, ignoring the loss of his small army. For some reason Shikamaru was certain this was the final move, that that Naruto was the real Naruto. This should be interesting. Asuma grinned, the kid was good but not quite his level. No doubt he had hoped to overrun him with a small army before swooping in and finishing him off. 
The kid was defiantly good, against a different non-wind opponent he would have won but Asuma had the advantage. The jonin began to fall, after rising nearly 100 feet from his ordinal leap the momentum was fading and he prepared for his descent. His surprise was clear when a voice below him cried out. Chakra chains, binding jutsu. Dozens of chains erupted from the smoke, snaking towards him with speed that caught Asuma off guard. The chains raced towards him, moving at a blinding rate. The jonin was helpless and couldn't prevent the chains wrapping around him, dozens securing him in midair. He struggled against them but found the chains to be like steel. Damn this kid was good. The chains lowered him down, reaching the ruined training area floor quickly. Standing there was a grinning Naruto, obviously basking in his victory. So Asuma-sensei, how did I do? Pretty good Naruto, but not quite. Wait wah. Naruto was cut off when a clone of Asuma tackled him, lifting him off the ground in a rib-crushing body slam. The blonde was sent flying, crashing into a tree. Immediately the chains were gone and Asuma was at Naruto, a trench knife to the throat. Not quite kiddo. The next week was hell for all of them, even Naruto. Asuma had immediately worked out their weaknesses and set plans for all of them to improve. Each day started with fitness until lunch, then teamwork or personal training till the afternoon. At the end of each day they would spar with Asuma, working on increasing their survivability against him. It turned out that Asuma had been majorly holding back on Naruto, and the genin still had a long way to go. The squad had begun to actually bond in this week, with Naruto actually beginning to accept his new teammates. Both had doubts in their own abilities, a lot like his old squad, but they were improving greatly. However Naruto was still kicking their asses, which wasn't a surprise. Yo Naruto, how come you can do wind-style jutsu better than Asuma sensei Tenten asked yet again she had been torn apart by Naruto's wind-style. It's kind of down to how strong your affinity is, like some people are stronger in some areas I guess. Never really paid attention to that aspect. More focused on creating new jutsu and improving my styles. Naruto replied, rubbing the back of his head. The blonde had opened up a lot to his teammates, and when Kakashi wasn't training his new team he was spying on the boy. It was nice to see old Naruto pop out from time to time. Runts. The trio who were about to begin sparring again halted, seeing their sensei approaching. Tenten shot daggers at the bearded jonin. Runts? Tenten demanded. You're little, therefore runts. Anyways the Hokage needs us ASAP in the Hokage office. Move it! Asuma, a weird sort of urgency in his voice. Disappearing into the smoke, the clone of Asuma left the three genin in confusion. Even Naruto who was for some reason remarkably well informed for a genin, confused. Tenten shrugged and began to walk away before noticing her team were no moving. Turning she raised an eyebrow. Not coming? He asked. Something's up Shikamaru muttered. Damn right something's up. Naruto agreed. First rations and now direct summons. Must be something big. Troublesome. The pair sighed in unison, something which Tenten hadn't quite worked out how it was done. The pair had instantly bonded, with Shikamaru working up plans and Naruto hitting hard. But it was more than that, they pair seemed to fit like two pieces of a puzzle. Well are you coming or no? Tenten demanded. Yeah yeah? Shikamaru grumbled, God this woman was irritating. Don't take that attitude with me Nara boy. Troublesome. What was that? The trio of Genin arrived at the Hokage Palace in under ten minutes, deciding to stop wasting time and get moving. Arriving at the door, Naruto was recognized immediately and were guided in without being checked. Much to the shock of Shikamaru and Tenten. Being shown and they were surprised to find the other Genin teams present. Not another fucking reshuffle old man? Naruto demanded as they walked in. Thuds were heard as several of the Genin dropped in shock from hearing Naruto treat the strongest ninja in their village like a common friend. Not today Naruto. However this is possibly more important, the Hokage said chuckling. Now pay attention all of you. Regaining their composure the eleven gen informed the line, with Asuma, Gai and Kurinai behind them. Kakashi and Naruto chose to lean against the far wall. As some of you may know there have been rations and food shortages within the village. However what you do not know is the reason behind all of it. The Hokage began. You see to get to that we need to start at the beginning. Here we go Naruto muttered. I'm sorry Naruto, would you prefer to explain instead? The Hokage questioned cheerfully. Might as well. Naruto replied, straightening and moving to the front. Leaning on the edge of the Hokage's desk he clicked his fingers, grinning as the Hokage's assistant pulled a map of the Land of Fire into the room. You see, the Land of Fire is divided into eleven regions. With the capital being in region one and Kanoha being in regions two. The capital is where the daimyo resides along with the richest towns and townspeople, along with the most powerful businessmen. Region 2 has no towns or villages bar Kanoha and just has ninjas and farmers for a population. Districts 3 to 4 are trading regions, 
with Region 4 being a port region. Regions 5 to 8 are farming districts and are the poorer than the rest bar Region 9. Region 9 is a mining region and the poorest of all. 10 to 11 are just population regions. Now here is where all of that is important. Regions 6 to 9 are in rebellion against the daimyo, led by his brother. Because of this the crops of three regions are lost meaning the loyal regions have to survive on one region's worth of crops. Each region has two regiments of samurai, each 5,000 men strong, with the capital having six and Kanoha's region having zero regiments. This would give the daimyo a total of roughly 24 regiments, or 120,000 samurai to call on. However seven regiments have joined the rebellion from region 6 to 9. This means the rebellion has 35,000 samurai to their names, leaving the daimyo only 85,000 men under arms. He needs at least 60,000 to defend against other countries leaving only 25,000 to fight 35,000. Only Regiment 14 stayed loyal to the daimyo when Region 6 to 9 rebelled. I believe they are currently retreating towards Region 1 but are being followed by two regiments of rebels. Our mission will most likely to be to gather the loyalists and guide them into the safety of Regions 1 or 2. Naruto summed up. The Hokage nodded, suddenly noticing the shocked faces of most of the present ninja. Only the jonin didn't seem phased as Naruto basically knew everything that happened in the Land of Fire. The teams present will be moving to assist the retreat of Regiment 14. They lost around 700 men in their escape from Region 6 so they are below strength and hunted by 10,000 samurai. Most of the main body of their force is already in Region 1 but around 400 are not. Intel says they are in a group near our border so we need to guide them into Region 1 safely. Our reports estimate only 900 rebel samurai will be within contact range so be careful. Once you arrive teams 8 and 9 will guide them samurai and whilst teams 7 and 10 will find and delay the rebels. The Hokage explained. The Genin nodded, dividing into their squads and saluting. Now go and save our troops. The Hokage exclaimed, sending the ninja sprinting away. Two weeks after Samurai Rescue Mission was issued, Yukane crashed into the ground, tumbling through the undergrowth. Clutching his side he pulled himself up. Limping forwards he tried to escape from his pursuers. His eyes darted around, trying to find an escape. He had been divided from his twenty-man squad, all of them rebels under the daimyo's brother. Lord Jomiai, younger brother to the fire daimyo had promised his regions and regiments wealth and better living conditions for his family. The war had been going well, his regiment, the 16th regiment along with the 17th regiment had been hunting down what was left of the 14th regiment. His squad was part of the advanced search force designed to kill the loyalists who were scattered around the place. His squad had been tracking a small unit of around eight men who had been sighted nearby. Apparently one of them had a high-ranking officer within it who could have useful intel. That had been the case until they had awoken yesterday and found seven out of the twenty-man squad dead. Each had been a sentry placed around the campsite, and each of them had been killed silently and crushed brutally. Each person's limbs had been ripped from their bodies and then flung around the place. No samurai could have done that. It was clear to the squad then that Kanoha had decided to enter the fray and if they were all being honest, it scared them. Ninja were elite killers, whilst being outnumbered by samurai they were so much more deadly. Ninja could clear ranks of soldiers or crush them in one-on-ones. Yukane tripped, stumbling over a tree branch. Hitting the floor he groaned, pain shooting through his bad left leg. He tried to lift himself up before a foot slammed into his back. The heavy nailed sandals pressed into his back, driving his face into the floor. You know, you samurai aren't really that tough. A voice called. I mean we destroyed the last of your squad in a few minutes. And we are pretty low-ranking ninja. Well I mean I'm not but my comrade is. Shut up and get on with it already. Another voice growled. Jeez Sasuke. You really take the bite out of my intimidation tactics you know. The first voice responded cheerfully. Yukane was more shocked than scared for a short time. These ninja, his killers, his squad's destroyers, the men who had torn apart the sentries were talking like he was a toy. He had been about to shoot back a reply when a blade thudded through his armor, instantly killing him. That's the last of this squad, how many is that now? Naruto asked, pulling out his katana. That's three squads, so sixty samurai rebels. Sasuke replied flashing through hand seals and sending a low-leveled fire jutsu to burn the body. Yet we still haven't found the squad we are looking for. Yeah, I mean if we don't find them soon then Kakashi will have to pull the plug on us. We need to find that officer's ASAP. Naruto sighed, wiping the blade on a cloth he had produced from a storage scroll. Last word was that teams 8 to 9 had got the main body back to the main regiment, and the rest of our teams were wearing down the main rebel force. They lost around 200 men last count, leaving only 300 in a large group with roughly 340 samurai and squads of 20 around the area searching for this squad. That's what 17 squads looking for one loyalist squad. Not easy. Sasuke summed up grimly. We should get moving quickly. 
With a nod, Naruto sheathed his blade. Naruto glanced around, making sure his scroll was tightly packed. No trace had been left of the dead samurai, nothing to alert anyone of their mission. Nodding to Sasuke the pair leapt off, launching into the trees and headed off north, beginning a sweep of the only part of the region they hadn't done yet. Their teams, seven and ten were currently located in the east, pressuring the remaining samurai. Naruto a question. Sasuke asked slowly, as if picking his words. H.N.? Naruto grunted. After the team changes, a council member called me into a small meeting. He went on to say about placing me on the strongest team for what I needed and a load of shit. How come they change the teams if you're so strong? I mean with you we had the best team. Sasuke asked curiously, the blonde had made the change his perspective on life a little. Well I can only answer your question to what I can assume and work out, but from what I can gather the council don't really like me. Not that I care but I assume they don't want their precious Uchiha with me. Secondly Choji is a good ninja for your team, he's a heavy hitter, built like a tank, large reserves and loyal. You two attack head one while Sakura works out plans and assists. Perfect first response team. Naruto summed up. What about your team? They don't seem strong? Bit of a waste? Sasuke questioned. You'd be surprised. We are pretty much the best genin for a tactics and combat squad, probably the third best that Konoha will ever have. I mean Shikamaru has an IQ of easily over 200, seriously he's a genius. Tintin's aim is beyond impressive, and she works fast. And I can pretty much steamroll most opponents apart from high-level jonin. Naruto explained. And if we look at the other teams they are well balanced as well. Team 9, under Guy is a tracking squad due to having a Haiga and an Inazuka along with having the power to take down targets with Lee. Naruto carried on to explain as they powered through the countryside. Team 8 is Infiltration, Kurinai. Their sensei is the second best genjutsu user I have met, and the best currently in Kanoha. With a Yamanaka, Abiraim and a Hyuga, no fort is safe. I guess, just seems weird they decided to change the teams. Sasuke muttered. The pair continued, covering many miles in silence. Only stopping once for a slight break. So far they had thought that it would be another uneventful day until Naruto's acute hearing picked up the faintest of sounds. Holding up his hand and catching Sasuke, he managed to swing himself and the raven-haired boy round, directing them towards the new sound. What the F Sasuke began, but was silenced by Naruto. Sounds fighting up ahead. We need to recon it first then go in guns blazing okay. Naruto ordered. Sasuke nodded, fully aware of the gravity of finding these samurai. Hopefully it was them, it would make the mission complete and they could regroup with Kakashi and company. As the pair started to gain ground on the noise Naruto heard, Sasuke began to hear faint sounds as well. As the closed the faint sounds became distinct fighting noises. Ahead of the pair was a large clearing, causing both boys to approach carefully. Concealing themselves they approached and positioned themselves to listen and see what was going on. Senka, turn yourself over. A samurai officer called out, stepping away from the group he was with. Naruto narrowed his eyes, the officer was clearly with the rebels, marked by their purple painted armor. He was accompanied by roughly 160 men, eight squads and half of the men left searching for their missing loyalist samurai allies. In the center stood the eight samurai survivors they were looking for. Senka was the name of the 14th Regiment commander, a grizzled veteran of a disgraced regiment. Fuck off you pricks, Senka called out, stepping forward also. Now Naruto could see Senka, the young blonde quickly looked him over. The man was heavily built, easily six foot three inches, roughly the same height as Kakashi, if not slightly taller. Heavy muscle could be seen under his distinctive dark red armor. A officer's plumed helmet hung on a belt at his side, leaving a shaven head. Chiseled and scarred features stared down the rebel officer, behind Senka, his seven comrades prepared for battle. You brought this upon yourself, Senka. You could have led the rebellion. Kami herself knows that you have led us to victory. The rebel officer called out. Men! Get them! The 160-strong rebellion attack force roared, drawing their weapons. As one they charged, crossing the distance towards the loyalist band. In the center the band of loyalists roared defiance and braced. Just before the rebel forces hit them, the ground exploded. Giga Destruction Jutsu the ground directly in front of the rebel officer erupted sending dozens of rebels flying. The officer himself was caught directly in the chest, ripping him in half. Every samurai in the area halted, staring at the figures emerging from the dust cloud created. Naruto and Sasuke emerged from the dust cloud, covered in blood. Sasuke followed the blonde boy's lead, stalking towards the rebels. Naruto was in his element, covered head to toe with three squads worth of rebel blood, he looked like the death demon, Shinigami, himself. Drawing out his katana he grinned pushing chakra into his legs. Let. The. Fun. Begin. The ninja exploded forwards, 
disappearing in an instant and reappearing in front of the first squad of samurai. In a quick slash he tore the head off a rebel in one swipe, ducking low and kicking the falling body into three more rebels. Leaning sideways he drove a devastating punch into the chest plate of a rebel, crushing the plate and his ribs in one motion. Naruto pushed forwards, flicking his katana outwards and killing another rebel. Sasuke leapt towards the loyalists, landing in front of the imposing Senka. He glanced around to make sure none of the rebels were approaching, but currently still reeling in shock from Naruto's brutal attack. A ninja? The fuck? A loyalist samurai exclaimed, half drawing his sword. Easy there, Kanoha are on our side. Senka growled, a half order and a half warning. Now what's the escape plan? Sasuke stared at him. What was this guy chatting? Escape plan? Yes, where's the extraction point? Things like that. Talk quick, boy. Your friend isn't going to last long and I want my men out of here ASAP. Senka demanded. My team is probably on their way to support us but until then you guys need to get out of here. Sasuke said, turning to face the attacking samurai. Naruto was still fighting fiercely, driving his katana into rebels with force, ducking under slashes and swipes. But even he was beginning to become overrun, you see samurai armor is chakra resistant to an extent, so jutsu were less potent. Only working at about 70% power compared to others. So the blonde was sticking to taijutsu and kenjutsu. Ninja, get my men out of here. Senka ordered, drawing his katana. They can go without me. Sasuke growled, drawing a kanai. That is an order shinobi. Senka shouted. As a regiment commander, until you are at least a chunin you follow what I say, got it? Sasuke stared at the man, sizing him up. Finally after many seconds he nodded. Beckoning to the loyalist samurai he sprinted off. Six of them followed, with the last about to leave before he noticed Senka standing still. Sir, are you not coming? Not this time, Kane. This time I fight. Senka responded, staring down the rebels who were swarming Naruto. With all due respect, sir, I will stay with you. Kane replied firmly. Senka glanced around, staring at the man. Grinning, he nodded. The pair stood next to each other, katanas drawn, bracing and ready. Glancing at each other, they nodded. Kane, I wouldn't have anyone else but my second stand by me. Senka muttered. I wouldn't have anyone but my commander stand by me. Kane chuckled. 3-2-1 charge. Senka roared. The pair roared, charging forwards into the fray, catching the rebels who were swarming Naruto off guard. The slammed into the rear of the circle around Naruto, driving their weapons into the backs of two rebels. Naruto ducked low under a slash. Pushing forwards he managed to get a quick thrust into the attacker's groin, finishing him quickly before kicking him into the rest of the rebels. This knocked over several more which he quickly finished with neat slashes. Cries to his right sounded, and he took a second to glance over, cursing when he saw the commander and another soldier fighting the rebels, driving towards him. Pushing Chakra into his legs he leapt upwards, spinning in the air. Using his momentum he launched his katana at a rebel who was about to slash the commander from behind. Hurtling through the air it crushed the lung of the attack who was mid-swing. The commander spun to find his attacker impaled. Looking up he nodded a thanks to Naruto before taking a second to study the boy. He noticed the hand seals, and the time he was taking to complete the series. From his experience, more hand seals meant a more powerful jutsu. Kane, back up now! He bellowed, turning and sprinting away. His second turned, looking up. Finally it dawned on him, and he leapt backwards, fleeing with his commander. Chakra style, chain explosion! Naruto roared. The world was filled with death for the rebels. The trio marched into the camp, covered in blood and gore entering through the gates of the royal encampment before the capital. Upon seeing Senka, donned in his commander gear, the guards immediately saluted. Sliding sideways they let the trio in, however sneers covered the faces of them. Naruto narrowed his eyes, watching two guards who were practically chomping at the bit to attack the commander. Only the fear of execution held them back, even regiment one samurai who were the imperial guards could bypass that rule. Commander Senka, why do these men seem so angry? Naruto asked, studying the encampment that stood before the imperial capital. Why are the traitors of the traitors? What does that make my regiment if not scum? Senka replied grimly. Yet we stood loyal to the daimyo. Kane added sourly. Kane, ignore them for now. We know where our loyalty lies. Senka reprimanded. Passing through the encampment, Naruto took time to observe the home for seven regiments of samurai, with the first regiment being situated in the capital. He was surprised to see that the soldiers were treated well, large tents and what appeared to be good food. However it was quite cramped, housing more than usual as the 2nd and 3rd regiments were usually out on patrols or assignments for the daimyo. Senka led Kane and Naruto through the tents, down the main path towards the army headquarters. As the pass by the 14th regiment's housing entrance, 
the guards cheered with vigor upon seeing their commander and captain. As the news spread the entire 14th Regiment camp began to cheer, causing an uproar that could be heard from the Imperial Palace, mainly the daimyo's chambers. The trio walked past the tent lines, grinning as the 14th Regiment samurai poured out to cheer them. Passing by the 14th Regiment camp, after a long time they arrived at the army HQ. Being guided into the main rooms, Naruto was surprised to see all of the Konoha team seated along the side wall, with the Jonin senseis in the center of the room with what looked like the regiment commanders and captains. Asenka, excellent timing. A large man, at the head of what looked like a map table, called out. Greetings Royal Commander Hanze. Senka said, bowing his head respectfully, followed by Kane. Naruto stood perfectly still, studying the man he no knew commanded the armies of the daimyo. Next to him Senka glanced at the boy he had come to like. In the time they had taken to get back to the center of Region 1, Kane and himself and come to like the boy. They had talked long and hard with the boy, finding him clever and loyal to Konoha but also headstrong and likable. Naruto, this is the royal commander, he is the uncle of the daimyo you know, Senka whispered. And what Senka, I will not just give him respect if he has not earned it, Naruto growled. The room went deadly silent, most of the Konoha ninja's mouths hit the floor. The samurai commanders and captains almost fell over with shock, with them being used to the lines of command and respect. The silence was broken with the deep chuckle of Hanze, clutching his belly he laughed out loud. I like this kid, he has balls that's for sure, Hanze roared. Kakashi sighed, yet again Naruto failed to show respect. Senka, Kane, join us. Hanze ordered, turning serious once again. Hanze was a beast of a man, standing at six foot six inches he towered over everyone in the room. His armor signified him as royalty, the only difference however from the standard was the fact he carried a yari on his back. Naruto joined the genin, listened carefully. Asuma ordered. Naruto scowled but nodded, sitting down next to Shikamaru and Tenten along the far wall. Now that Senka is here we can be. We currently have 35,000 samurai in the capital, give or take a 1,000 because of the losses that Senka took. We need to leave at least 10,000 to defend the capital and to defend the lands around it. Also this is the reserve. This leaves us 25,000 samurai to beat back the attacking force. Intel says that the 10,000 chasing Yusenka is now attacking Region 4 and the regiments there need support as they took heavy losses from an ambush. Currently there is only Regiment 9 left, Regiment 10 has been utterly destroyed. Hanze informed them. Shock was written across the regiment commander's face at hearing an entire regiment had been destroyed, the Jonin ninja only grimaced. Regiment 9 is down to barely 3,000 samurai and is holed up in the governor's castle. Regiments 3 and 4 under Keitai will go to relieve them. Now upon hearing that we are moving the rebels will likely mobilize a support force. They have 25,000 men left, and we estimate they will send another 10,000 men to support their army in Region 4. Regiments 14 and 1 will meet that force and halt their advance. This leaves Regiments 2 and 5 to guard the capital. Regiment 6 will follow up Regiments 3 and 4 with extra provisions and will then support Region 4. Hanze explained. We move at sunrise. I will be staying here waiting for the rest of the regiments to arrive. The Kanoha teams will be divided up in this as well as you are with us for another month anyways. Team 9 under Mike Guy is to become the added security for the daimyo's ambassador who is traveling to Kanoha. Once there you are dismissed. Team 7 and 8 will be with regiments 3 and 4 to assist with the retaking of Region 4. Team 10 under Lord Asuma will join regiments 14 and 1 in meeting the rebels. Excuse me Lord Hanze, but surely regiment 6 would be more useful than regiment 14 in this movement. A commander questioned, barely containing his anger. They are a disgraced unit, my lord. Anyone would be more useful. Senka took a step towards the commander, his katana half-drawn. He had been about to move and strike down the other commander when the man suddenly disappeared. The man reappeared across the room, slamming into the wall. Naruto stood before him, fist bunched into the man's gut. The commander doubled over in pain, coughing. Immediately the other commanders were alert, swords drawn. This caused the jonin to settle into battle stances watching the commanders. One of their own was more important than a samurai commander. You call a unit that stayed loyal to the daimyo useless? You call a unit that fought through shit and blood to get here disgraced? Naruto roared, grabbing the man's throat and slamming him into the wall. Just because you are the daimyo's royal unit does not give you the right to decide who is disgraced or not. The first regimental captain began to move towards the young blonde, ready to defend his commander but was stopped halfway. He found himself unable to move. Behind him Shikamaru stood, holding the man in place. I don't know why you're getting so angry when Naruto is clearly right. Tactically the 14th Regiment has done more than you this entire war. Shikamaru said sternly. Now now, let's just step back a second. One of the regimental commanders tried. Not until I hear an apology. 
Naruto growled, still holding the commander by the throat. The man was still clutching his stomach, struggling to breath he was now kicking around. Gasping for air he grabbed at Naruto's hand. Naruto! Drop him! Kakashi ordered softly. The blonde turned, glaring at the jonin before dropping him to the floor. He stalked away, jabbing his finger at the captain of the 1st Regiment. I suggest you sort the attitude of your men, as I have seen them give the 14th Regiment the same shit. The growled before walking out and leaving the room. The 1st Regimental Commander slumped to the floor, panting slightly. He groaned as he stood, straightening his armor. He glared at Kakashi, the jonin however just I smiled at him. I suggest you sort out your student Hataki. Next time he will not win. The man growled. I cannot stop Naruto as he is no longer my student anymore Riko. Kakashi replied, pulling out his book. So who is the fucking master of that prick? Riko bellowed. Whoever it is will face harsh punishment. Have fun punishing Asuma then. Kiba chuckled from the background, only to receive a smack on the head from Ino. The blood drained from Riko's face as he glanced at Asuma who was chuckling. He muttered something incomprehensible before shaking his head. I'll let this one slip Lord Asuma but next time I cannot ignore it. Riko said sternly, trying to appear as if he wasn't shitting himself. Right anyways can we move on. Asuma said, barely containing his laughter. Naruto stalked through the main gates of the Imperial City, walking aimlessly. He had never entered the Golden City but he was too angry to take in the sights. For over an hour he walked aimlessly, not even realizing he had entered the poorest areas in the capital. He had been about to turn when a voice cried out from a street to his left. We know you have some money, we can smell it off you. The blonde sprinted forwards, rounding the corner to see a man being surrounded by a group of a dozen or so thugs. They were slowly closing the man in. Naruto acted instinctively. Rushing forwards he threw a powerful punch that crunched into the man at the rear of the group. A bone-shattering sound emerged from the head, and he man's skull caved in. He hurtled forwards, crashing into the man in front of him. Naruto bent low and delivered a devastating kick to the next thug's rear leg, following it up with a roundhouse kick to the back, killing the man instantly as he heart exploded from the pressure. By now the other nine thugs had reacted to the threat and were moving to attack the boy. They almost tripped over each other when they realized the person attacking them was barely thirteen. The leader grinned, throwing a punch at Naruto. The young ninja caught it in his palm and tightened his grip before pulling the man towards him, throwing out his right arm that caught the sailing man in a spine-tingling left hook. The man's face caved in, and he screamed out. Upon seeing their boss get crushed underfoot by a boy of thirteen the other bandits attacked recklessly. Naruto ducked under a wild swing and sent a punch with such force into the attacker's stomach that his fist actually burst through his stomach, appearing on the other side. The rest of the bandits fled for their lives. Grimacing at getting his clothes bloody, Naruto shook his hand clear of the mess and made to turn away. Young man! Naruto turned to the man he had saved, watching as he walked forwards. The man was of average height, his physique hidden by a heavy cloak. He had neatly done hair but other than that he looked like an average man to Naruto. Would you not have a word with the man you rescued? They asked cheerfully. Well I didn't want to trouble you, Naruto said awkwardly. It is no trouble at all young man, you are forever in my debt. I can never repay you for saving me, however could you tell me your name? The man asked with a chuckle. Naruto Uzumaki, and you? My name is Suko, you could say I have some importance within the realm I guess. Suko laughed. Yet you're here? Well I like to see what the poorer people are thinking, so I can change things. Obviously a lot needs changing. You say that like you are the daimyo or some shit. Naruto said dryly. That Naruto my boy, is exactly what I am. Bullshit. Suko was caught completely off guard by the comment. Regaining his composure he laughed heartily. Naruto I can assure you, I am the daimyo. And earlier I may have made a mistake, it appears that you are not in my debt, I am in yours. It seems the rush from earlier is still affecting me. Suko chuckled. I still don't believe you. Surely a daimyo would have guards. Naruto said, still disbelieving the man before him. If you do not believe me then that is your issue young man, but I can say for certain I am the daimyo. Come I will show you. Not waiting for Naruto to follow, Suko marched off. Naruto noticed that the hunched and scared posture was gone, replaced instead by an powerful walk that wreaked authority. Sighing he followed the man. So old geezer, why are you out here if you are the daimyo Naruto asked with a short laugh. I was seeing what the lower members of my rule thought of what was happening. My brother has caused quite a stir you know. Your brother? The revolt leader I assume. Nodding Suko went on to explain the history behind it all. You see my father, the former daimyo was a very war-heavy man. My eldest brother was born in the same mold. They both thought that the fire country should expand into the wind country and seize their lands. My younger brother agreed with this as well may I add. 
but he thought it was too soon and too reckless to attempt. He just liked the idea. Anyways I was heavily against the plan, as were many of the commanders, notably my uncle and a commander named Senka. Together we planned a coup against my father who, at the time, was becoming quite the tyrant. So as he went on a visit to As It Happens, Region 6-9, we assassinated him and my brother. I believe the ninja to do was called Anko or something. So after my father and brother, the heir, were dead I moved to seize power. My younger brother was barely fourteen when I took power. He only recently discovered that I killed my father and brother, causing a massive rift in the family. My brother left along with one of my cousins and gathered local lords to his following. Suko explained sadly as the pair began to walk off, Naruto following the supposed daimyo. So pretty much your brother realized you're a kinslayer? Naruto summed up. Not so much a kinslayer young man, more a peacekeeper. Suko sighed. I'm not judging, however a great man once taught me that those you who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Suko glanced at Naruto, studying the boy who had a lost look on his face. You see when people go through a life-changing event, one that affects their perspective on life you can tell. You can see it in their eyes, the way they act. Naruto. The boy's eyes sharpened again, looking up at the daimyo. It's interesting however Suko, that so saves so many sometimes you have to sacrifice a few. Suko regarded the boy, he had thought him intelligent but the boy was so wise for his age. A fine daimyo he would have made he thought, far better than himself. Their conversation was cut short as they arrived at the royal palace gates. My lord! Naruto glanced over, seeing a young brown-haired man sprinting towards him. The man was dressed in a monk's attire, with a short bow staff. In a single leap, the man launched forwards and whipped round his staff, bringing it up to Naruto's throat as he landed. State your name and your reason for being with the daimyo, he cried, his eyes burning with indignation. In a flash Naruto was moving, grabbing the end of the bow staff and pulling the man towards him. Throwing his right arm out he slammed his forearm into the man's throat. The man's leg shot upwards and just before his head crunched into the ground, Naruto wrapped his leg around his neck, holding the man between his lower and upper legs. I suggest you try not to attack me again, he growled. I was returning the old geezer to you. Easy Naruto, Suko said softly, reeling from the fact that the young man, who was barely thirteen had just taken down one of his ninja guardians. Naruto glanced at Suko before releasing the man. Passing his bow staff to him he took a step back and nodded to him. It's a fine weapon, he said dryly. Who are you? the man asked tensely. Naruto Uzumaki, ninja of Kanoha and student of Asuma Sarutobi and Kakashi Hataki. You are a ninja Naruto? That explains a lot, Suko said with a chuckle. This is Kora, one of my fire guardians. Naruto studied the man, who was roughly five foot ten inches. He had a slight frame that showed toned muscle. Most of his chest and legs were covered a white robe, along with his left arm. His right arm however was uncovered and showed muscle. His head was shaven and had a single scar running above his ear. I am sorry Naruto, I mean no harm. I thought you were a threat. Yeah, it's fine. Anyways I best be off, Naruto said, nodding to them both. The blonde began to walk off, heading back to where he was based. Naruto, Korra called out to him. Naruto glanced over his shoulder, waiting for the impending question. What rank do you hold? Korra called curiously. Jenin. Naruto said before disappearing round a corner. Genin! Kora exclaimed. Such ability as a genin. His chakra reserves are above any I have ever met. Suka watched where the blonde had been in interest. He glanced at Kora, grinning. I think I am going to the Chunin exams this year, Kora. One week later. Our intel was wrong. There are three regiments, not two against us. Rico, commander of Regiment 1, growled as he studied a map in the command tent of the small army. We can't let them join forces. Senka said as he too studied the map. If a single regiment can hold them here, the other can take out the rebels. The area he pointed to was a narrow valley, narrow enough for a regiment to hold for a long time against superior numbers. The other regiment is coming from the east and is looking to join with the northern regiments. I shall lead the first regiment to clean up the rebels whilst the fourteenth holds. We will destroy the rebels and attack them from behind, Rico said, glancing around. In the command tent stood Senka, Rico and Kane along with Keitai who was Rico's second in command. Team 10 also stood around the map, watching as the commanders discussed attacks. Asuma will come with me, his power is needed to break the opposition as quickly as possible. The genin will stay here and support 14. Rico carried on. We move at first dawn. Nodding the men and genin left to prepare for the upcoming battle. Nervousness poured off the samurai of the 14th regiment. Against them were 10,000 former allies. 10,000 men looking to kill them. Naruto stood at the head of the formation, 
glancing backwards and seeing the ranks of men blocking the valley. Studying the men he saw fear in some of their eyes. It took him way back to when he and Kakashi had fought with some water samurai on a mission. A single song came to him then, the song of the samurai of old. The deep thud of marching men was heard in the distance, and the first ranks of the ten thousand appeared from the trees only a mere four hundred feet away. In this world of monsters and men Naruto sang softly to himself. The samurai next to him glanced at him questioningly. Heavy is the hand. That lifts the crown, right off the ground. Their eyes widened as they recognized the song of old. Hope filled them suddenly, out of nowhere. Kings will never die. The men around Naruto added their voices to his, with the song spreading through the ranks. I would walk through hell itself. More and more voices began to join. If I was by your side. The voices of five thousand samurai bellowed out the song, their singing filling the valley. In this world of monster and men. Heavy is the hand. That lifts the crown, right off the ground. Kings will never die. I would walk through hell itself. If I was by your side. The samurai finished the second verse with a deafening roar. Determination filling their faces. The grin now, ready for the upcoming fight. Defiantly not his first battle before Kane muttered. The command tent was situated at the rear of the regimental position, with the regiment's range detachment standing before them, in prime position to pick off any key targets. At Naruto's own request was he placed at the front, ignoring the protests of Shikamaru and Tenten. The pair had taken up roles in the command tent, and instead of risking their lives and attacking head-on, they were waiting for any prime opportunities to help. Senka also thought they were too young to be placed on the front lines, as he had tried to argue the point with Naruto, but the blonde had marched off to the front anyways. The regiment had formed a line, roughly five hundred men wide and eight ranks deep. Behind them stood the six hundred range detachment, and a four hundred man strong reserve unit. The front ranks were the heavy men, veterans of many battles. One thousand of the best men in the fourteenth, behind them were the younger men, roughly two thousand of the newer recruits, followed by the last one thousand who were mid-tiered experience. The opposition is moving in, sir, Kane said, watching the distance. The attacking forces had matched the five hundred wide ranking, and were roughly fourteen ranks deep. They were doing straight for the win, with pure brute force. Shikamaru was the first to notice it as he studied the opposition. Commander Senka, there are three thousand men missing, he announced, watching the ranks flow towards them. The commander spun from talking with Kane, staring at the genin. His eyes widened before he glanced at the opposing ranks. Counting them quickly he swore aloud. Fuck. Right we have to move fast, they could be flanking us or attacking the first regiment from behind. He growled. Kane, take the rear one thousand men in the reserve and find them. Ten Ten will go with you, from what I hear she is a bloody good marksman and will be helpful here. Senka ordered. Kane nodded, quickly bawling out orders and pulling back the rear rank along with the reserve. He turned to Shikamaru, nodding to the Nara and winking before he trotted off. Followed by 1,400 samurai of the 14th Regiment. Shikamaru, from what Lord Asuma tells me you're quite the strategist. What's your thoughts on my battle plan? Senka asked curiously as he stared out at the attacking force. It's not my place to comment. Shikamaru answered he had been warned by Asuma-sensei about commenting on the commanders of the daimyo. Nonsense Shikamaru, I'd rather you find a flaw in my plan than let my men die. Now look at it quickly. The rebels are preparing to attack, Senka said in a voice that allowed for no argument. Sighing Shikamaru studied the battle lines and quickly noticed several flaws in the plan. The 14th Regiment was set up too rigidly and allowed for no retreating or advancing maneuvers. Moving back two ranks and allowing a gap of ten foot would allow the unit to react better and attack easier. Commander Senka, if we move the rear two ranks back they can act as a reserve and a wall if the forwards units need to retreat, also we can use them as flanking units or support units. Shikamaru answered quickly. Senka nodded, looking over the plan. Internally he was smacking himself for not thinking of it already. To be shown flaws in his plan was humbling, but by a twelve-year-old was quite hilarious indeed. Good idea Shikamaru. I want you here and helping me react if need be okay? Senka chuckled, the boy had quite the mind indeed. Brace. Steadying himself, Naruto ready to receive the oncoming attack from the ranks of rebels. He was situated in the direct center of the formation, in the front rank. Drawing his sword he held it low, ready to parry an attacks from him. The first ranks of attacks roared, charging across at the 14th Regiment. Steady. An officer called out from just behind Naruto. The men beside him, ready themselves. Digging in the lowered their bodies down, in preparation for attack. Naruto glanced ahead, there were what seemed to be roughly four ranks moving in, so about two thousand men. If he could break the center then they could destroy the flanks in one movement. The attackers were now only one hundred feet away when the archers launched a first volley. 
arrows peppered the rebels, taking down many and opening slight gaps in the ranks. Another volley was fired and seconds later the ranks clashed. Naruto blocked an attacker's blade, before letting it slide across his sword and flicking it away. Quickly ducking under the blade he slammed his katana deep into the man's stomach. Blood sprayed everywhere as the man coughed, crying in pain he was kicked backwards as Naruto removed his katana. Beside him, the 14th Regiment were holding ground and the veterans were showing their skill as they took out the rebel samurai. For nearly twenty minutes Naruto held his ground with these men, slicing down attackers. Around him the samurai took strength that a kid with such ability would fight alongside them in this fight. They growled and attacked the rebels with renewed strength, cutting through the last rank of rebels. The short skirmish was over as soon as it started. Before the veterans of the 14th were four ranks of dead rebels. Two thousand dead rebels lay there, soaked in blood. Only around 340 of the 14th's veterans had been lost. A good trade it was. Yet there were still five thousand fresh, more experienced men waiting to attack. Even Naruto knew that they had sent the weaker units to attack before the veterans of the rebels attacked. In the distance he could see a plumed officer at the rear of the five thousand bellowing orders and sending out messengers to the captains of the units. Obviously he was the senior officer, and everything revolved around him. Naruto. The blonde turned to see Shikamaru pushing his way through to him. While he saw the pineapple head, the rest was hidden by the samurai. The Nara had been placed at the command tent, so why was he here? Naruto. Senka needs to see us now. Shikamaru cried, still trying to push his way through. I'm on my way, meet you there. Naruto answered from the mass of men. Boys, the mission is very simple. I need you to take out the officer on the other side of the battlefield. Everything flows through him so without him leading them, the rebels will collapse and fall into disorder. Then we can push and finish them off. Senka explained. Nodding the boys exchanged a glance. This was their first solo mission together. Something they did not take lightly. The seriousness did not need to be explained. The plan is for you two to go around the right flank. From there you will strike the commander down and launch a rear attack with a detachment of my men. Roughly two hundred should do. Now Senka carried on until Naruto interrupted him. Senka, a detachment will not be needed. The commander stared at him in disbelief. As strong as you are Naruto, and you too Shikamaru. They are not going to break from two ninja. In response Naruto formed a simple hand sign, summoning a shadow clone from thin air. Grinning at Senka he laughed. There is your answer Senka. Still Senka argued. There was no way this kid could produce enough of those to be effective. He knew enough of chakra and ninja to know that a genin didn't have enough chakra to mass-produce those. You can't produce enough of those to be effective. He protested. You'd be surprised, Shikamaru muttered. Naruto smirked, before leaning into Senka's guard and whispering into his ear. The shock that covered Senka's face when he was informed was easy to spot, however this shock was replaced with awe and then replaced again with an evil grin. Well then, time to rout some rebels. Shikamaru watched the rear guards move and change shifts. Even in the middle of a battlefield, regulations and guards had to be kept for exactly the reason they were there. He and Naruto had managed to keep to a small tree line to the right flank of the 14th, and sneak past the flanking watchers. The rebel scouts were none the wiser as they had been led on a wild goose chase by twenty of Naruto's clones who had orders to kill them once they were pulled away. Which had then led them to where they were now, crouched in a large tree watching the rebel commander give out orders as the regiments attacked each other. His line of messengers constantly giving out orders, as he thought of a plan, Several ran past him heading for the front lines. Hey Shikamaru, I've got an idea. Naruto murmured. If we can take out the next pair of messengers and henge into them, then we can get close enough to take out the rebel leader. Or as I should have said, you can get close enough. Why only me? Shikamaru demanded in a harsh whisper. I'm not going in alone. It's fine, you take out a messenger with me. I send a clone with you. You killed the rebel commander, and then my clone covers your retreat. As you pull out I will perform the kawarimi, substitution jutsu, on you, pulling you out and sending me in. Whilst you are dealing with them I will be hiding my army of shadow clones in a line, for maximum effect. Naruto explained. Shikamaru stared at the blonde. It still shocked him how many different sides to Naruto there were. The guy went from carefree and an idiot to a hardened war veteran in a matter of seconds, and even though he was as thick as sack of shit sometimes, the guy was pretty resourceful. Let's go then, best not to keep them waiting. Shikamaru said dryly as Naruto nodded, making a shadow clone to help the Nara. Within a few moments a pair of messengers passed directly underneath the tree they were hidden in. In a flash Naruto acted, firing out a pair of chains and grabbing both men. Pulling them up into the tree, he quickly let the clone and Shikamaru copy them before snapping their necks with cold efficiency. Shikamaru shuddered in his hench. Then there was the deadly, merciless Naruto that seemed to always be lurking. Like a shadow waiting to pull you in and devour you. 
Pushing the thought to one side, he leapt down with the shadow clone and raced off in the direction that the messengers had been originally going. Hey aren't we meant to be going that way? The clone asked as it followed, highly confused. Yeah but if we arrive back too quickly then they will suspect something. Plus we can give out false orders and ruin the ranks this way and still take out the commander. Shikamaru explained as they neared the rear ranks. Hey! Messengers! Over here! A voice called out. Following the voice, the pair pushed their way through towards the center of the right rebel flank. Surrounding them were hundreds of hardened veterans who wouldn't think twice about killing spies. Calming himself Shikamaru spoke to the captain before him. The commander wants the right flank to retreat back and push into the center. He said, as officially as possible. The fuck? Why? The captain exclaimed. The commander feels that a more center-focused push will crush the core of the loyalist forces and finish them off. Shikamaru said with a careful shrug. If he thinks it's best. The captain sighed. Right. Form Tayan 7. Go go go. Nodding at Shikamaru the captain began to pass on orders. The men moved in confusion but followed the orders anyways. Taking the chance to move out, Shikamaru and the clone ran off, heading back to the man command site. Within a minute they were approaching the commander's area. What the fuck are they doing? What did that messenger tell them? The commander roared at a helpless assistant. Sir I believe these are the messengers sent. A guard bawled as he grabbed Shikamaru and the clone. Luckily Naruto had placed large enough chakra in the clone that it didn't pop, but Shikamaru was still nervous. Bringing them both to the feet of the commander, Shikamaru managed to catch a glance of several figures racing in the tree line behind the command tent. Explain yourself? The commander demanded. He was a pretty average man, average build, average everything. So Shikamaru shrugged and simply tilted his head sideways hoping to bring the man towards him in rage. His plan worked. You impudent idiot! The commander roared taking a step forwards to strike the young henged man. Within a flash Shikamaru lunged under his guard, dropping the henge. With a quick stab he lodged a kunai into the man's heart before driving a punch into the hilt of it. The kunai exploded out of the man's heart on his back, killing him instantly. The entire command tent seemed to freeze for a moment, before the clone went to work. Reaching up the clone grabbed the guard's arm and with a massive pull, it flipped the guard over its shoulder and slammed it into the ground, quickly stamping on the man's throat. Flicking out its katana it engaged two more guards, allowing Shikamaru to back off. However several more guards charged him, one getting inches in front of him before he felt a tug of force. The next moment he was standing next to the original tree, watching as Naruto unleashed hell on remaining guards, darting through them taking them out with precise slashes. Shikamaru watched in awe as Naruto tore apart a section of thirty guards in seconds. Wincing he pulled out the flare from his pocket, and quickly summoned a simple clone, sending him off a good fifty foot away before having him activate the flare. Launching into the air it exploded, signaling for the 14th regiment to attack. From the distance Shikamaru heard the dull sound of a horn being blown, followed by a deafening clash of weapons. Within minutes the 14th regiment were tearing apart the rebels, with the help of the Naruto clones which had emerged from their hidden places. Naruto himself was firing bolts of lightning into the rear of the rebel unit, causing a complete rout of the rebels. Samurai simply turned and sprinted away from the 14th regiment to run into the second wave of Naruto clones, roughly 100 of them. As one they drew their katanas, all in unison making it look like they were all controlled by a Naro's shadow control. Lowering their blades they roared in unison before flinging the blades upwards in a massive arc that sent waves of pressured sharpened air into the defenseless rebels. It was a massacre. XXXXX the third Hokage sat, watching the village go about its daily business from the Hokage's office. It had been a tranquil day, rather odd since the land was in the middle of a royal civil war and many towns were declaring for either the rebels or being taken over by gangs of Yakuza rapidly. His thoughts were broken when a knock echoed through the room. My lord, a messenger is here for you. Something about gang reports. His secretary said. Send him in. Replied the aged Hokage as he turned in his seat to face the door. Within moments a tall man entered the room striding in with familiarity. He was roughly six foot tall, and was donning a heavy trench coat, very similar to what Ibiki wore. His face was rough and worn, showing many small scars. Eiji Marino the Hokage murmured. It's been a while. Apologies Lord Third. Eiji said bowing. I've been busy tending to the business ventures required in the upcoming months. I have some to discuss with you later if that is okay? Of course it is Eiji, however I have more pressing matters to attend to first. After your reports of course. The Hokage responded, quickly firing through hand seals and activating the sound seals. Not before sending the hidden ANBU out of the room leaving only Eiji and the elderly leader. Well firstly our profit margins are up 8% in the recent month due to the war. With have increased our revenues by 3.5 million rio, making our total income in the past year and a half 43.6 million rio, 
with 20 million of that going into the organization funds. Another 13 million has gone into paying our various contacts and men along with supplies. This leaves 600,000 Rio to be paid to the village for the various damages caused. This leaves 10 million Rio to go the boss and the higher ups, including myself. The boss himself will have earned a total of 7 million Rio in the past year and a half. AG explained, flicking through pages he had produced out of his trench coat. We currently have a total of 700 men under our banners, each earning a total of 10,000 Rio in the past year and a half, leaving 6 million Rio for investments and other costs. As I said, we currently have 20 million Rio in the organizational bank. We have also seized the workings in the land of water and are hoping to send the boss to sign the deal with the new Kage over there in return for rebuilding the land. Loki, of course. We estimate a rough earning of 10 million Rio a year from the land of water if the deal is signed. In return, we will pledge 2 million of that to the land of water as payment for allowing us to operate. The third nodded upon hearing how well the business was doing. Currently, only four people in the Kanoha Ninja Corps knew that the Fire Country's most powerful Yakuza was operating from Kanoha as a base. As payment for allowing them to operate, the Hokage demanded 5 million Rio a year as a sort of tribute. Excellent work. The boss is currently out helping the daimyo tie up some loose ends. However, when he and his associate are done along with their teammates, I will create a trade signing deal for them. This way it can stay incognito. The Hokage sighed. He should be returning in a week so get everything ready until then. Nodding Eiji left, grinning at the new business deals that could be made in his boss's name. XXXXX. Asuma Sarutobi grunted as he tried to reach for a cup of water on his bedside table. It lay just beyond his grasp and he began to sweat with the effort. Need a hand, sensei? A voice called cheerfully. Asuma scowled as Naruto entered with Shikamaru and Kakashi. The trio grinning as they saw the veteran Jonin struggle with the feet while the boys grinned, Kakashi just I smiled. Perhaps it would be easier if next time you didn't try to face 500 men by yourself I. Naruto continued. I mean you beat them and saved the first regiment but still. Naruto Asuma growled. I mean even 1010 beat a good 50 of them, but 500. That is impressive. Naruto chuckled as he passed the drink into the Jonin's hands. There must be a reason for you being here other than to laugh at your sensei. Asuma grumbled. There is indeed Asuma. The three of us will be taking part in an escort deal to the land of water. We have been hired by the local Yakuza to defend their diplomat. Kakashi said cheerfully. The Kit Syndicate hired you. For what need? Asuma demanded. No clue but we were going to head out within three days so we thought we would pay a visit. Kakashi answered happily. Heading out where? A voice asked. They all turned to see Karinai, Sakura and Tenten enter. Some escort job. Shikamura muttered. Troublesome. What already? Tenten demanded. We haven't even had a chance to all catch up and relax. We should have a meeting of the Kanoha rookies and their senseis. Excellent idea Tenten. Now we just have to find a place for it Karinai answered slyly, glancing at Kakashi and Naruto. Not mine. Kakashi called, followed by Naruto cursing as he tried to say the same thing. Fuck. The blonde muttered. So Naruto's it is then, tomorrow night at 7 p.m.? Kurinai grinned. Grumbling Naruto sulked off with Kakashi following, I smiling the whole time. But Kurinai-sensei, none of us know where Naruto lives. Sakura protested. Just tell everyone to meet me outside the Hyuga compound at 6 p.m. tomorrow, trust me. You are all in for a real treat. Kurinai grinned, winking at Asuma who was also confused. What if Naruto graduates at 10 Chunin exams, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video, and see you guys, in the next video.